Oh, we're live. Hell yeah. Welcome to Christian's 2022 or wait, 22K celebration stream. Uh, he actually had to bail out because the internet went down. So it's just going to be us sort of talking and celebrating 22K without Christian. <clears throat> I'm eating a banana. That's why I'm choking. As you guys can see, the mustache is sort of back. I shaved tonight. So here it is. Uh, and great news. I saw Ghostbusters Cold Kingdom tonight and it ruled. I won't give you guys any spoilers or any kind of uh, um, plot beats about the film that'll spoil anything, but uh, it was fantastic. Don't believe the uh, the dis hype. It was great. Ghostbusters Cold Kingdom was fantastic. It was way better than uh, way better than uh, Afterlife. But it does not deserve the hate it's been getting, I can tell you that. Hey, Fred. I thought you bought the Fred doll, not the actual uh, Barney doll. And he's gone. Now, before, <clears throat> what's weird is, Christian, the Flintstones came out in 94, which is sort of peak childhood for me. I was seven at that point. I never saw that movie in theaters. I never saw it on home video. It took Shanna like two years ago for her to finally say, we have to watch this because she loved those movies. She loves Viva Rock, Viva Rock Vegas too. So I didn't even see those bo either of those movies until like two years ago when I was well into my 30s. So that's pretty bizarre. Dude, I grew up with the Flintstones. And I, yes. I you got to imagine, Brandon, as a kid, I didn't know what the hell embezzlement was. Uh, the movie is about marital issues hating your mother-in-law so as a kid it's so funny watching it because to me they just made they made fred look like he they made fred sign documents he wasn't supposed to and so the bird helped him clear his name mm -hmm. like that's what i took away from it as a kid but as yeah. an adult i actually i actually love the flintstones unironically it's really and good. i do i do have fred there he is right there that's there fred he is and so the the con the person i bought fred from said hey i have barney out of the box I'll sell them to you dirt cheap. I was like, that's fine. So I, I paid 15 bucks after shipping for Barney. Nice. Are you <laughs> going to take Fred out of the box? That's the question. Well, he's in the box and not in the box, right? Like you can touch him. Like he's not like he doesn't have plastic in front of him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like I, I kind of keep him like that. But really quick, hopefully my head is fine, guys. My power went out and uh my power went out and it came back on pretty quick but sometimes when that happens the internet can be wonky so if it goes down down brandon's gonna hold it down but we got our boy saturn video i'm coming out of my mic right you are just yeah. making sure okay i don't, good, want, I don't want this to sound bad saturn video with a 20 dollars super chat always very generous um see seething and burning with raw crystal rage the butterman stands before devil chh about to enter the fight of his old and folded life the future of mankind rides on his shoulders will he prevail or will he fall and the answer is with all these nicknames everyone that i accumulate i accumulate like three pounds of fat <laughs> it's a classic <laughs> thank you so much saturn i appreciate it brandon what are we drinking tonight Czech strawberry soda, a modern classic. So be before you take a sip, because we got to do a cheers, because I've got my drink. Before you take your sip, Brandon, hang tight really quick. So guys, okay. this is called the Super Buttero Bro Show plus CHH Hits 22K, which I'm very happy about. This is this is a show for you guys to just hang out with us and talk. Uh, me and Brandon may get on some funny, wacky subjects like tea dinners and um, – God only knows what else. You know how it. You know how it is on this show. We talk mm -hmm. about all kinds of wacky stuff. But this is your show tonight, guys. Whatever you guys want to talk about, uh, we're down for it. So with with with, we need to have a cheer tonight, Brandon. And I want to show you what I'm drinking tonight. Oh, nice. What is it called? This Oxyshine? is a ghost. This is a Ghostbusters Oxy Shred and Slime Energy Drink. Now, here's the thing, Brandon. The flavor is called Slimer flavor. Mm. So it's probably going to taste like absolute shit. Right, right, yeah. So you haven't tried it yet. I'm about to try it, but we got to do a cheers. And I'm assuming you want to cheers to Frozen Kingdom. I do, but I think we got to cheer to 22K. Everybody in the comments sound off. This man hit 22,000 subscribers on his channel. That's a 
I crazy only feet. bought four thousand of them too. That's true. Out of, cheers out of to twenty-two. I bought four thousand of them. Are you ready? Cheers, everybody! Cheers to CHH twenty-two K. There it is. Cheers, my friend. There you go. And I'm gonna hold the pose for a second. Get a snapshot, somebody. And are you ready? Okay, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> All right, dude, you ready to try this shit? All right, guys, this is the Oxy Shred Slimer Flavor Energy Drink. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, it's going to be terrible. There's no <laughs> way that's good. <laughs> Not even joking. It's fucking gross. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, it's disgusting. <laughs> is it actually gross? It's fucking nasty. It doesn't taste like like lime or something, dude. The after the the after I'm gonna take another sip. The aftertaste is like absolute shit. It tastes like hot sick, doesn't it? Like acid. It, it tastes it tastes like those fucking healing plants that have the you like have the gel inside of them. Aloe, aloe. Yeah. It tastes like fucking aloe. We have aloe growing in the back porch, in the backyard. I'm d- I'm done. Cut the show. I can't. You gotta it. no. You have to finish the whole thing. You have to chug it. Ian Glyph says the best. Chug it. Chug. It. Everybody say chug it. If there's if there's ten chuggets, he has to chug the thing on camera. Oh god, dude, this is disgusting, and it's got fifteen calories. <laughs> so you're you'll be healthier if you chug it, dude. This is disgusting. Holy shit. I feel like most of those are though, right? Like most of those novelty. I can't chug it. Don't y'all. I can't. <clears throat> I can't chug it. Guys, guys don't zero, make chug it. zero out of ten. Do not recommend the oxy shred. <clears throat> Didn't you say the child's play energy drink was gross too? It was disgust. No, I the uh, Friday the thirteenth was disgusting. Mm. The Friday the thirteenth was dis- was disgusting, and I didn't try the nightmare on Elm Street. But Brandon, can you do the Barney Rubble voice of him reviewing the oxy shred of him doing the oxy shred uh drink taste test? Here we go. I can't do the voice, but I'll try. Try. Uh, hey, Fred, that was really nasty shit. <laughs> Is that uh, it? That's all I got, man. That's all I got. Let's really say, a really let's, cool line. Let's say Barney uh, got offered a full case of Oxy Shreds to drink on camera. Um, sure, I'll give it to my friend Fred. <laughs> he likes all this nasty shit. That's kind of the voice, right? That's, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> Dude, it even looks like Rick Moran. It's, it's so his bizarre. head. Let me see. Let me grab. Let me grab the. Uh, let me grab the Barney, and you can tell me which one's head actually looks closer like it. Ooh, hey, Garrett's in the chat. He just saw Ghostbusters: Cold Kingdom too. It tastes. Garrett, you better have loved it. It tastes like an aloe vera plant. I really mm. hate this. Thank you so much, Justin, for sending me this, though. He sent me two of each because there's a there's a Ghostbusters red can. And then there's this. He gave me two. He goes, you could try two and then you can keep two. Brandon, you should have seen my uh, if, if anybody didn't see it. I did a G Fuel energy drink review of the Friday the 13th one, Brandon. It's my favorite video I've ever done in all 12 years of YouTube. I'm like, guys, we've got the new Friday the 13th G Fuel. You know, I'm really excited. I'm so glad G Fuel's getting into the horror movie stuff. Like, let's give them a shot. I go, yep, that tastes like absolute shit. I think I watched that. That was funny as shit. <laughs> yeah, I need to. Uh, I need to call out Mike Mack here real quick. He says I sounded like Yogi Bear, and that kind of blows my <laughs> that kind of blows my mind because Yogi Bear does sort of sound like Barney, does he? Doesn't he? Better In the old the cartoon, average, but they he sounds yeah, similar. It, That's better than the weird. average bear. Boo boo. Is it the same voice? I'm gonna look that up. Is Yogi Bear voiced by the same dude? Because they do sort of sound similar. Oh god, uh, I'm on a tangent here. Don't mind me. Boys. We'll take a poll with the chat too. We'll see which character actually looks more like the actor. So here we got we got Barney. He did. It's the same guy. Dawes Butler originally voiced the original Yogi Bear as well as the original so Barney Brandon, Rubble. Dude, Brandon, you just got a compliment. You just I got did. a compliment. <laughs> I just flipped everybody's lunch tray. That's a revelation. It's the same guy. All right. Brandon, you ready to judge? All right. Here's Fred. 
Is that John Goodman? Or is, is Barney more Barney? It's I think that's really John Goodman. But dude, this is Rick Moranis. Rick Moranis, <laughs> like, but the Rick Moranis Rick... one, it looks like it could also be one of the Baldwin brothers <laughs> to me. Yeah. But uh, no, uh, unironically though, Brandon, I'm assuming you like the movie, but unironically, the Flintstones movie is pro you remember we did the 10 the, we did the Rad Pack challenge. Mm -hmm. That was in my top 10 movies that made me was the Flintstones. That's right. You know, it's not so, a bad choice. I love it. I, and I love the B-52 soundtrack on that, too. is really great. So, Brian, let's see who we got in the chat tonight. We have a lively who chat. We, we got? got 96 here tonight, guys. Please drop a like. I'm not going to bug y'all too much about that. We got Shane Bennett, Muzak, Chris Snyder, Justin Smith, Michigan Dipper. How are you? Uh, Rock Music Forever 90. Uh, Mike Mack, how are you? Ann Lives, Retro Ryan, J.G. Michael, The Connor Shoe, Shoehart Show. Blu-ray Addict, uh, Clay 3613, PlayStation 9, uh, Horror Collector 87, Nuclear, Saturn Video, of course. We got Garrett in the chat. Uh, oh, look at Garrett, bro. Slimer, Oxy is fire. He's lying. We, we, we <laughs> but see, Garrett's into all that energy, not energy, but like that health crap. Like, so he's yep. used to the taste of uh, poison, basically. <laughs> 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 me and Brandon, me and Brandon are. Me and Brandon run on high fructose corn oh, dude, syrup. Yeah. <laughs> Garrett snorts Flintstone vitamins. We snort grease. Okay, that's what <laughs> butter. This is the Butter O Bro show. That's what right. are you talking about, Garrett? <laughs> Our veins don't move, man. Uh, Nathaniel Fincher, Adrian James, Witch Hunter. It's good to see everybody here tonight, guys. Like I said, this is your show. I'm going to start pulling up comments, and we're just going to let it rip tonight. Let it rip. Um, Justin Smith says the creepy looking dick to Bert. And we got Brandon, we got Gar in the chat. We do. What's up, Gar? <laughs> oh, is that how you say his name? It Gar. is. You have to say it's violent, you know. So, Brandon, you were showing me your CRT the other night, and um, yeah, you've got a number of CRTs. Do you just kind of kind of keep do you kind of hang on to some to keep in the collection? Do you do you use any on a regular um, basis or not really? The giant JVC we just got back out of storage about a year or two ago. It still works really good. Uh, had that here at the house for a long time it's been in the family since 2001 or 2002 still works great sounds fantastic it's one of those old tube tvs that even back in the day when we would have it on like full blast for a movie people would think we had a surround system because the sound was so good just stereo but something about the speakers stock on that tv just are we're just killer I'm listening. I'm listening. Dude, but, JVC, um, JVC was a good. I have JVC a big. JVC was very good. I have like a 36 inch JVC in my shed. Dude, it weighs a ton. Oh, dude. Yeah. That's where our back problems are coming from, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, they don't make 4K TVs, do they? JVC is not around anymore, right? Let I haven't see. seen that logo in years, dude. I don't think JVC is around anymore. I've seen LG unless unless JVC became LG or something. That would they be might have got weird. bought out. Is but, JVC uh, still in business today? I'm, I'm gonna find out right now. But the other two um, CRTs I showed you, the little flat screen one and the the tiny one, I got those from work. My boss was just giving them away because he didn't need them anymore. The small one has a VHS player in it. It's really, really, really cool. I've yet to test that one out. I'm kind of afraid to test out a VHS on it. They were bought out, basically, Brandon, and um, they 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 were they were ab absorbed something so they're kind of around but not really but yeah dude i was happy so i've been looking for a crt again in this room i'm pretty much almost done i'm waiting on one poster mm. to put right here and i wanted to get a sci-fi poster have you seen a movie called the last starfighter i have not for a long time with uh directed by the by michael myers as a matter of fact nick castle directed it you know right. that's a, i want to do a show one day just talking about nick castle as a director because look i'm i love halloween as much as the next guy and he is quite frankly an amazing michael there's no doubt about it but dude nick castle's actually directed three movies that are really kind of classics mm -hmm. nick castle and it's just off the top of my head he did the last starfighter which i love that movie it's really a great sci-fi kind of action and almost not really coming of age movie but also maybe a little bit um, he also did Dennis the Menace, mm -hmm. which is really good. And then his best movie, F 
fucking major pain, dude. Who doesn't love major pain? And that movie, I feel like it's disappeared, Brandon. But when we were younger, major pain was like literally the biggest, like kids favorite movie of all time. Do huge. you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Like it was I, huge. You can quote me. Everybody can quote major pain, but where did that go? Dude, it is gone. I never see major pain on streaming sites. I'm sure it's available, but you never see it featured or popular. It's just kind of disappeared. And I also don't see enough people talking to Nick Castle online about his movies, like in interviews. I understand why most of it's Halloween, but like, dude, he's actually a really good director. I mean, he went to school with John, so yep. I, I don't know. I love Nick Castle, and if I ever got the chance to meet him or talk to him, I would want to talk to him about The Last Starfighter, and I'd want to talk to him about um, Dennis the Menace. Dennis the Menace is, like, such a good movie, dude. Like, it I really is. I still say uh, Christopher Walken, as a kid, he spooked me as that as that homeless guy in that no, movie. No, yeah, the, uh, what was his character's name in that movie? I forget, but when he's cutting the apple and shit, I was like, right. damn. Yeah, he's freaky looking. Yeah. Uh, I feel like most people just don't realize that Nick Castle is a filmmaker outside of you know Michael Myers and stuff. Yeah, and and, and it, when you if it's like if you were to say if you when you and when you associate Nick Castle with a, with a horror film, you don't expect him to direct his different genres. Mm -hmm. But uh, he's actually like. Nick Castle understands comedy clearly and dude doing those kids movies I argue is probably some of the most difficult stuff to do like you can just tell making Dennis the Menace had to be a pain in the ass oh yeah like, there's no way it was easy mm -hmm. and and it was successful it was really successful at the time yeah so uh, let me give a real quick shout out to the late late horror show who's been a member for three months thank you so much Dino congrats Planet CHH thank you dude and and <clears throat> congrats to you Dino Dino's channel is He's on fire. He's got 133,000 subscribers. Nice. He's doing a great job. He has a great show, great clean show over there, and I, it couldn't happen to a better guy. So God bless you, Dino, and thank you so much, dude. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, did you mean Christopher Lloyd, not Christopher Walken, Brandon? And Dennis Is that what Dennis? I said? I said you Christopher said, Walken? I oh, knew that, would have been, that would have been horrifying too. Yeah. I knew what you meant, but because, yeah, I knew what you meant, but because I'm also getting old and folded, um, yeah. I just... <laughs> It didn't register until I've got somebody... I've got Dune two on the brain. That's why you know. Oh, do, are you seeing that this weekend? I have to see it. I I've do got to see it, dude. I'm dying to see Dune two. So you're a fan of Dune one? I loved it. I like the '80s version too, but I loved the 2021. What am I, I missing? Why do I not like the '80s Dune? Like I kind of hate it to be honest with you. Uh, when is the first time you see, you saw it? Like four or five years ago, and I I, I watched it through the lens of watching david lynch movies and david lynch himself hates his own dune uh i don't know man it's such a cheesy weird movie um i just i don't get it i hate maybe the fact you were that they taking had to, they, you know they had to film the intro of dune was shot after the fact and they literally had to film an explanation of the goddamn movie because it didn't make any sense you know, um, I know it's I know that, that movie is really divisive. The 80s version. A lot of people hate that movie. I just don't like it. Yeah, a lot of people don't like it. Um, I think it's a very strange movie. That's probably why I love it. But it's been in my life my whole life. So that's why. If I were to see it now, I'm sure I'd be like, what the hell is this? Because the 2021 version is so damn good. We just watched it three or four nights ago, Brandon. I'll tell you why I think Dune 2020 is so good. The soundtrack, dude, the music is so scary. Mm -hmm. Like, it's actually, it's so good. If you had different music in that movie, it could come across as the biggest pile of crap, I think. Mm -hmm. I really, I'm serious. Like, I, this is one of those cases where I think the music was literally the most important thing about that. I mean, the visuals are great. That's who's the bad guy in Dune? Like, the kind of heavy set guy that's Batista's uncle. Yeah, it's, um, uh, I forget Hurricane, his name. House of House Hurricane. Hurricane. Dude, the shot. The, uh, damn, what the hell is his name? It's slipping me. But we, you know, you obviously know who yeah. I'm talking about. The, the shot Baron. of him when he's floating up in the sky and you see a silhouette with the droning <laughs> sounds. Mm -hmm. Dude, it's this is like a twenty four Star Wars. Yeah, in a sense, exactly. but it's like it's scary and it's so intense. And I actually think of all the wrestlers who have broken into movies, I actually think Batista has done the best job. He has a really diverse portfolio now. Like he was a, a minor bad guy in one of the James Bond movies where he played it sort of straight. 
He, he's not like goofy at all in Dune at all like he is in Guardians of the Galaxy. He's got a pretty good resume, and he's pretty – uh, I haven't seen that knock at the cabin, but he seemed like he was pray, playing it pretty straightforward. I mean, he's good in the movie. I don't like the movie, but he's mm-hmm. good in the movie. I think he uh, he doesn't get enough credit. I think he can actually be a serious actor if he wants to. Yeah. I just I, – I, and, and instantly, I don't know if anybody's thinking the same thing, but people could say, well, Christian, what about The Rock? Well – the rock the thing about the rock is i almost feel like he's he is one of the biggest box office attractions today but i don't know that he's really had an iconic character and maybe i'm wrong i grew up when i was growing up the rock was breaking into movies right yeah. like walking tall grid Love iron gang yeah. you know those were the rock movie scorpion king but when you think about The Rock, it's like, what do you identify him as? If you look at Batista, he's a Marvel character or DC, whatever that is. Excuse my ignorance on that. Uh, he also broke into the horror genre in a, in a sense a little bit with Knock at the Cabin. And um, he did Army of the Dead, which I didn't like mm. that much. But I always like Batista in movies so far. And him being in Dune, I think it's just his, he has a I think he's got a great manager. Mm-hmm. who's saying hey this is going to be good you get into this um but i feel like the rock it's just like oh this is another rock movie blah 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 where with batista he's in uh, he's in stuff where the movie is more important than the actors which i think should always be in that order i think the movie should always be bigger than any of the characters but usually it's just like oh let's go see the rock's new movie i feel like that's what you would hear the average person say you know thank you dread and terror appreciate that yeah you're right he's sort of just the rock which I guess is part of the appeal, but um, mm. when I, I'm in the mid two thousands, I feel like that that movie, The Rundown, was really iconic for him. That movie, The Rundown, with a uh, Sean William Scott. Yeah, is that when he has the big stick, or is that Walking Tall? That's Walking Tall. That's okay. a great fucking movie too. I love that movie. But that was a remake mm. as well, I think. It was, yeah. You know. Uh, Brandon, people started asking. First of all, again, we have 116 people here tonight, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. I'm not saying this is necessarily the April show, but it kind of might be because uh, I don't know if Brandon. I mean, of course, Brandon. I think next month is the big month. Thursday. This Thursday. Oh yeah, it's happening. So yeah, so this could be Brandon. We got may moved need, up a couple weeks. So. Yeah. So well, that's that's awesome. So guys, this could kind of be April show. But we'll see. I think Brandon said if worst case scenario happens, if we just need to pre-record something together, to just put up of us just bullshitting or something, we can. But, you know, I'm just glad we're all here tonight. We're having a good time tonight. Oh, uh, yeah. Brandon, people were bringing up Alien tonight. No. And I know you have some concerns if you want to kind of um, get into that. And feel free to – I'm not going to I'm not gonna give you any guff about your opinion, but feel free to just let it all out how you feel. Um, as you know, I'm a huge alien guy. I know you're a huge alien guy too. It's just uh well, there's was, there's different levels of alien guys though, right? You know what I'm saying? There's yeah, alien yeah. guys, there's aliens guys, yeah, then there's alien and aliens guys, then there's aliens, alien, alien three guys. Like I know it sounds ridiculous, but really that's the case, right? And yeah, I think you're right. like the only one I don't really like, Brandon, and I'm not including the alien versus predator movies in this at all. Mm-hmm. The only one I don't like is Covenant. And I know you're not a big Prometheus fan. I like Prometheus, but I'll explain why in a little bit. But yeah. I like Alien. I'm sorry. I'm completely taking over this. I'm no, no, no. Go ahead. Go really ahead. Quick. I love Alien 1. I love Aliens. I fucking love Alien 3, as I know yeah. you do as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Resurrection, The people, if people, that, that's so such a fun movie. It's fun. And Prometheus, I grew to really like, and I'll explain why. And Covenant is not even a movie to me. I hate Covenant. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead I feel, I feel the same way but i'm flipped i i, I really enough, despise i despise prometheus and covenant's barely okay because of the neomorphs other than that i don't like the movie anyway that, that's interesting go ahead is that weird Alien, let's talk about uh, romulus i've been following romulus for well over a year and a half i think we all have and i was really anticipating it uh fide alvarez cool cool choice to direct the film I was glad to see that it was taking place between Alien and Aliens and sort of away from the Prometheus timeline, even though it's going to sort of apparently he said it's going to sort of mention those films too. all good. That's fine. All that stuff's good. I like all those details. That's fine. My biggest problem was the trailer 
Everybody liked the trailer, but me, apparently. The tone just seems off. I don't like the abundance of CGI face huggers. That all CGI shot of the Xena. I'm a, I thought we were sort of past this now. Especially when they were they were hyping up all this physical um, or practical effects and stuff like that, man. It's just it just seemed too it was so CG heavy and so brightly lit. I don't know, man. There's something about the trailer that just irks me the wrong way. Well, I mean, Brandon, <clears throat> they movie as cliche as it is to say they just don't make movies the way they used to. And I'm not even talking about the CGI and, 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 and the, uh, I'm not even just talking about the CGI to the practical effects, but really like the lighting, like you're talking about. Like, I really think that mo movies nowadays, like everything looks like a video game. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like a lot of stuff today just looks like a video game, but here's my thing. And you going to school for filmmaking, things like this can probably, respond to this or have some sort of an answer to this i personally thought the trailer looked pretty good i felt i felt like it, it to me it felt like an alien film um but when you say i thought we were going to do cgi for I, I think there obviously is cgi in there for maybe stagnant shots and things like that to get a good visual but there's an argument that CGI is cheaper than practical effects. And some people can argue that's actually not true. If you look at different examples of stuff like Titanic and whatnot, but would you say that post-production CGI is a lot cheaper than on set, um, on set practical effects shots? Oh yeah. So CGI that's CGI today is way cheaper than practical. But yeah, because when you're on set, you know, so my, my guess is there is going to be some great, I think it's because, you know, Brando, in the nine, in the mate, in the late nineties, they started mixing to a pretty, mm -hmm. they started mixing those two together. And, you know, Titanic's actually a great example of that, but also, you know, like Anaconda, I think people forget that there's actually a lot of practical effects in Anaconda. I mean, mm -hmm. they built a giant snake head. Yep. And you see it in there and they mix it. I mean, how do you, are you okay with that? And are you kind of just thinking, are you kind of hoping rather that maybe the trailer just got just, are you hoping maybe the trailer just really pushed all the CGI effects in the trip in the trailer itself? I'm to... hoping for, I'm hoping for the best. I'm hoping we just saw the bits of the film that are CG. Yeah. And they may not, have, they may not even be like completed shots. That's what I'm hoping for. And also since it's a showcase trailer, a teaser, Maybe it's brighter than it's going to be because nowadays, you know, like 10 years ago with digital film or digital, like, you know, digitally shot movies, you did need so much light, you know, to get the picture on screen and you can, uh, you know, man manipulate the lighting and post. But now with full frame cameras, all the new stuff that red's doing, you can shoot really, really low light without losing picture quality, clarity and stuff like that. I don't but see. I don't. We'll get to the super chat in just a second, Salem. But Brandon, you almost got a question though. Like, do you think it's quality, or do you think it's just the the way they think the audience of today just yeah I mean the movie to look like exactly? And it's it's might just be a matter of taste. It might just be me be I could just be being old and folded or grumpy. Maybe that's just uh, that was the creative choice is to make the movie look this way. You no, know, they are in a spaceship. It looks because, like they're orbiting a planet. Maybe maybe it's not supposed to be really, really dark and gritty. Let, let me give you an example of something with this. When Godzilla 2014 came out, I, I, I remember a lot of people complained. All the fight scenes take place at night. We can't really see anything. And by the third or fourth movie, when Godzilla's fighting Kong, they're fighting in neon, a neon city. Like where literally it's neon in the entire city. Um and I feel like that was somewhat of a that could have been somewhat of a response to the criticisms of Godzilla 2014. Now, I've told people if you get the 4K of Godzilla 2014, they completely transform the nighttime scenes where everything is so pristine and crystal clear. But I think the the, the real criticism was not we wanted at a neon city, but maybe a lot of the Godzilla fans were just saying we want this to look like the Toho Godzilla movies, which Godzilla fights and destroys a city at you know. 11 o'clock lunchtime so yeah I, I i don't know man like i i kind of have 
weird expectations with oh let me get to the super chat i'm so sorry salem station podcast with a two dollar super chat let me let me give him a clip give him a clip real quick the best part of eating corn on the cob is when like shit sprays out of it and you hit somebody in the eye with the water he ain't lying <laughs> uh so thank you so much the question was what's brandon's thoughts on the Puniverse uh, and bambi the bambi verse um it's cool I'm all it's, about it. Yeah, I haven't seen the first movie still, but the fact that they're getting so, uh, what's the word? They're so, uh, they're invested, confident and invested is pretty cool. What's not to like? You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, Garrett's in the chat. He says, I just saw the new Godzilla Kong. Tra- G- Garrett, first of all, Garrett, how dare you? It's Godzilla X Kong. Now imagine saying that out loud, dude, Brandon, I just saw Godzilla X Kong. Like Godzilla times Kong? Is that what you're saying? Right. Anyway, I just saw the new Godzilla Kong trailer night. It looks like the biggest piece of shit I've ever seen. What the fuck are they doing? Uh, I, uh, Garrett, I just think they're doing what they think uh, uh, works for the American audiences. And obviously, you grew up a Toho fan like I did. And, you know, this is not the direction that I think neither of us wanted to go in. You know, I, so... It, it is what it is. You know, it just is what it is. I, you know, hopefully Toho comes back with another. We don't have to wait another. What was Shin Godzilla 2016? Hopefully we don't have to wait another whatever, whatever it is, seven, eight years for another Toho Godzilla film. Mm. Um, yeah, because Godzilla minus one was Brandon. I don't know if you've seen that. I'm assuming you're a Toho Godzilla guy. You grew up on the Godzilla films a little bit. Maybe? Sort of, yeah. I haven't seen it though. I've yeah. heard nothing but good things about it. Yeah, my my uncle made me watch every single one ever that would come on TV. He was he made me an obsessed fan. So when I say Godzilla minus one is one of the probably top two or three of the greatest Godzilla films. Period. I can't emphasize that enough. It was that good. So um, let's see what people are saying, Brandon. Uh, but Brandon's excited for the Puniverse. He may not watch him, but he's excited. <laughs> And with, with all that said, I am hoping for the best for Romulus. I want it to be good because I've been dying for a good alien film for years. Uh, Brandon, so. I mean, my thing is this. I also think that they cut these trailers to to get the attention of modern audiences. And I mean, how many times have you seen a trailer that really didn't represent what the film was? Probably Almost every time. <laughs> See, there you go, you know. Uh, I mean, you watched a ton of the, like, for instance, this, you may actually say no, actually to this, but obviously you saw Godzilla, you, Godzilla, you saw Ghostbusters. You've got me confused. Is it Frozen Kingdom or Frozen Empire? It's Frozen Empire. I keep calling it Frozen <laughs> Kingdom for some reason. I don't know. Well, why. They're, they're synonyms yeah. at least. So you watched all the trailers for mm. Frozen Kingdom. Emp- is it Empire? Frozen Empire. What the fuck is it? Frozen Frozen Empire. Empire. (laughs) You've seen all the trailers of Frozen Empire. Do you feel like the trailers represented the movie? I do. I didn't feel ripped off or like, oh, that's not how it's supposed to be at all. You know, some stuff was was a little bit more truncated, which is expected for any film. But I didn't feel like it was misleading at all. And everything looked how it did in the trailers. Is it better? I think you said this, but I just want to hear you verbalize it. Obviously, me and you are big, big Ghostbusters fans. I mean, I consider Ghostbusters to be like a touchstone of America, of like just a touchstone of modern Americana. cinema. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. I really do. It's just a, everything about it. Um, yep. Where does this fall? Is this as good as Ghostbusters 2? No, no, I wouldn't say that. One, like two for me, like I know one is the staple, like we were just talking about, but for me, two is right up there with one. If I'm being honest, I know it's not as beloved or as it's got Bobby Brown in the same. Yeah, I don't want to say as well made because that seems detrimental, but it's it's let's say it's sort of like Jaws 2. Like Jaws 2 is a quality movie compared to the first one. Ghostbusters 2 is a quality movie compared to the first one. It's just not as beloved by the masses. This movie is not as good as part two. But I will say it's exceedingly better than Afterlife for me. Well, hold on, Brandon. Let me ask you this, though. Yeah. Take away 35 years of aging from Ghostbusters 2. Can you kind of do that in your head and give an uh, and give an assessment of that? Because look, it's really hard to answer about how good 
Ghostbusters 2 is when it's had 35 years to, you know, kind of get into people's hearts and minds and souls. Can you try to take that away and still tell me you think that it's better than this movie? Because like I really wouldn't be surprised if you if you would be like honestly Christian like because there's no reason it can't be to me no, like Ghostbusters two the, the the quality of and the quality and goodness of Ghostbusters two to me is is attainable like if you tell me this is as good as Ghostbusters I don't care if Jesus came down from Plymouth Rock and said Ghostbusters Frozen empire is as good as the original i would say you're full of shit <laughs> you know but if he said it's good as ghostbusters 2 i could believe it no it's not good as part two and the reason is this i think the chemistry of of those four original dudes plus sigourney weaver plus rick moranis, rick moranis yeah there's a magic there that's not just nostalgia it's not just old hollywood there's just a sort of like a magic there the way the film looks the way the, the way it sounds the soundtrack the attitude of yeah. the people making the film, the attitude of the audience, it's all different, man. Right. So like afterlife was a very quality film. This movie is a very quality film, but it, it can't, there's just, it can't recapture that zeitgeist. I was having a conversation with, with my buddy the, today from work talking about that kind of that same thing. Like ghostbusters was a juggernaut. It's one of those movies. That's just, it's beyond Americana. It's beyond American cinema. It's just a staple. It's like stayed Forrest in pop, Gump, like Back to the Future. Yeah, it's, it's stayed in pop culture even when right. there's no movies coming out. It does not go away. And even if you made a movie that was somehow of the caliber of the first film, as far as the cast goes, the soundtrack, the special, if you could do that, because you could technically achieve that greatness somehow, it's possible. It's not probable, but it's possible. Even if you could do that, it still wouldn't be accepted or as revered because it's not that first movie. And like, you can't recapture the zeitgeist in the same way. Right. I, but on, I don't know where we're, where I'm really going with this, but do you think it's going to age even better or worse? The new one? Yes. I think it'll age better for a lot of people who are giving it bad reviews. Now. I don't know what's going on. And again, I'm not going to spoil anything. Right. Or try to, you know, I want everybody to see the film. I sound like a fucking uh, spokesperson for the movie, but I think it's important that they go see the movie instead of listening to their favorite YouTuber or favorite film critic, give it a bad review and say it's crap. Cause that seems to be what 99% of people are saying. I was sitting there the whole time in the theater trying to see what people didn't like. And I could not find one thing besides a little bit of the pacing here and there. But said pacing issue, if you want to call it an issue, is something that all the Ghostbusters films have. So I couldn't find one fucking solid thing that I was like, this bothers me. I liked the cast, new and old. And if you think I'm getting too spoilery, stop me. But I don't think I am. Well, I think I asked you. The only thing I asked you was you didn't answer me. But I was like, I hope Dan Aykroyd has some because he's my favorite ghost. Oh, dude. I hope he has some great lines and some is great it a, moments. Is it a spoiler if I answer that question? If you just give me a yes or no, no, I don't think it is. Yes, he does. Okay. Because I, like, very... I, I love Bill Murray's next is the next guy, but I'm a Dan Aykroyd guy. I always a lot have of people, been. A lot, yeah, a lot of people, I won't name names, but a ton of people that I've been watching have said that the the classic characters feel shoehorned or pigeonholed or stuffed into the movie where they didn't need to be. Not to me. They fit into the narrative perfectly well. And where the story is 40 years removed from the first film and 37 or th whatever it is from the second film removed, they feel like where they are at their, in their lives fits perfectly into the narrative of the story. Like, I didn't feel like they were stuffed in there. And if they weren't there at all, and it was just the new cast, but they were in New York, it would be a problem. Because I would be like, where's Ray? Where's Winston? Where's Venkman? But it's perfect. I thought it was perfect. I loved it. I want another movie. I want three more of these movies. Can you give a yes or no to this real quick? And I'm going to get to the Super Chats. Did it really feel like an episode of the real Ghostbusters like everybody is saying? I'm going to be so happy. I haven't heard true. anybody say that. I haven't heard that either. And if I'm being honest, Ghostbusters 2 was like an episode of the real Ghostbusters because the real Ghostbusters influenced the look and vibe of Ghostbusters 2. And that's a fact. 
Thoughts? Thank you so much, Dread and Terror, for the two dollars super chat. Thoughts on in a violent night trailer? I'm excited. But see, Brandon, nature. this this is what makes me nervous about that. That trailer was so good. It I have should have feeling... been Friday the Thirteenth, right? That's what you're gonna say. No, but I I kind of agree with that. But my that trailer is so good. They're hiding something. Oh yeah. <laughs> Come on, Brandon. You went to school for this. Um, <laughs> they're hiding something. When I saw that, tra- I saw that trailer for the first time two days ago. I was on my lunch break and we saw it. And I I almost legitimately thought it was a fa- it was a secret Crystal Lake TV show trailer. That's what I thought it was at first. Oh, like they pulled that crap with the Blair Witch because it looked like ago. it like the whole thing looks like Jason. He's got the sack head. He's in the woods. There's a lake. There's a dock. Like I was like, what are they doing here? Um, but yeah, I'm stoked. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm gonna give you. I gotta get the clips. Gotta get the clips. It is fucking fantastic. Oh, I'm afraid to ask, dude. Garrett says he found something that bothered him in Ghostbusters. Um, Garrett, if it's not a spoiler. Oh, I imagine it probably is. I can't wait for you to see it, dude, so we can talk about it. That movie is. I'm going. I might go I'm see going it again. Sunday. I'm going Sunday. I got. My band Cold Canyons. Look us up on Spotify. Cold Canyons, guys. We're we're in the process of putting out our own record, but we have a number. We have like 15 songs. Actually, put more like 20 songs on Spotify and iTunes. Go check us out. We're a rock and roll band. Cold Canyons. Look us up on Cold Spotify Canyons. and iTunes. But anyway, tomorrow is a busy day because we're in the studio working on stuff. We have a couple shows coming up we have to rehearse for. And uh, so tomorrow I'm swamped. But Sunday. Ghostbusters takes precedent over Dune 2. It just does. It does. <laughs> you know, That's why I went and saw it tonight. It just does. So I'm, I mean, Brandon, like, so I got my Ghostbuster stuff. I'm surprised you didn't get the bucket or anything. Did they not have it at your theater? Uh, there's an not, AMC in my, you know, like, in the you're not into that over. Stuff? I miss, I don't want to collect that kind of stuff. I don't have enough room as it is. <laughs> see, uh, see, I got a whole, I've got a whole shelf up there. Look how that goat, that stay puff, Brandon, is as big as it's, it is like two feet tall. It's yeah, gigantic. I believe it. I believe it. You know, it. but anyway, uh, thank you. Total meltdown with a $2 super chat thoughts on Judas priest, invincible shield. I got to be honest with you. I have not listened to it yet, but I love me some priest. I really do. Uh, but I have not listened to you, Brandon. I, I, you don't strike me as a huge priest fan. Maybe I'm you not. Are. I am not a huge priest fan and I have yet to listen to the record as well. I'm curious, but I have yet to listen to it. They put out a record a few years ago that was so incredible. It was like a flaming kind of gold record. It came out in like 2019, maybe 2020. Insane. Uh, thank you, Total Meltdown. Let me give you a clip. Uh, let me get a short one. I'll just give him, I'll, I'll give him another quick one. Do my favorite. So it's not good. It's really <laughs> gross. <laughs> Oh, God. Sammy with a $2 super chat. What's your favorite It's So Bad, It's Good movie? So bad, it's good. So bad, it's good. You know what one of them is, like, legitimately, is Mm. Mac and Me? Like, I really love Mac and Me, but it's so bad, it's it is so bad, it's good. I don't know. I have to think about that, that question. Mac and Me and, um... I love uh, uh, Troll 2, even though that's very cliche to say. Yeah. I almost think Zombie 4 is so bad, it's good. Uh, it is at certain points. So is Zombie 3. I um, like Zombie 4 more than Zombie 3. Oh, Zombie 4 is way better than 3. Uh, Hell of the Living Dead's better than both. I'm going to go with uh, Ghoulies 4. That's so bad, it's good. Jim Minorski. Mm hmm. Uh, Great pick. All right, let That's me give a cracking movie. It is the best part of eating corn in the cob is when like shit sprays out of it and you hit somebody in the eye with the water. And Hara Orman with the two dollars super chat. I just wanted to say happy twenty two k, sir. I really appreciate that, guys. Um, you know, I get asked sometimes. Hey, I want like t- yesterday. I had I had somebody ask me. Hey, I really want to do a YouTube channel. What do I need to do? You get. It's just like anything else in life. You get out of it what you put into it. And I had to learn that the hard way for a long time. And I'm very blessed to be where I'm at. But I'm proud because I know I, I worked hard and I, I earned it. And I, I, I'm very proud of my YouTube channel and the friends I made in the community and uh, the people that watch. I, have a, I, have, I dare say I have probably the best audience 
I could uh, find. It seems like my chat and my people that watch my show are smart. They're educated. They I learn as much from you guys as hopefully sometimes you may learn something from me. And um, could not be happier with the chat and uh, the uh, viewers I have. I'm sure Brandon feels the same way about his audience. Same. So. Uh, oh, Brandon, he's pissed. Oh, I know. But see, I think Garrett was kind of in a bad mood today because he's all upset about um, Roadhouse. So I, I think he he may need to revisit it. I don't know, Brandon. How do you feel? I uh, I think I think Garrett was just because I, I did Roadhouse put him in a bad mood. I mean, it did. We could, yeah. it, did. it put him in a bad mood. Garrett hates uh, Ghostbusters too, though. So you know, he was predisposed to hating this movie. I thought he liked uh, Afterlife. I can't did rewatch he? it, but I like it. <laughs> Afterlife like is it. really good, but I swear to God, dude, I might see this one again in theaters. It was so damn. I, it was it fucking so good. I cannot believe this movie's getting shredded by critics. It blows my mind. I don't understand what the hell's going on. Unless I'm just inherently a lover of terrible movies, I don't get what everybody's talking about. Yeah. Uh, Justin says, I just don't like how they're bringing kids into it. You got to. Uh, you got to probably imagine that's the uh, Stranger Thing effect, right? But this movie is way less of if afterlife puts you i'm not gonna give spoilers but if afterlife puts you off of the franchise because of that reason this movie remedies that entirely to me really i swear to god yeah not that doesn't like get rid of the kids but like you'll see a much better balance a much better balance akeem what's going on dude akeem says uh and guys akeem worked on one of the best movies at when the when the year is all said and done akeem worked on probably uh, I think what's going to be in the top five movies of the year, and that is um, Iron Claw. So um, I came just again. I can't. I can't tell you how uh, happy I am for you with the Iron Claw. It was just. A, it's a masterpiece. Even though I kind of poke fun at the Ric Flair, nobody could have been Ric Flair anyway. But the movie and and Zach and everything just tearjerker of a movie so um happy for you man akeem says the critics gave ghostbusters 2016 a certified fresh on rotten tomatoes <laughs> that's crazy to me. i don't I, you know i i think that was akeem you would know do they do do rot does rotten tomatoes pay for good reviews sometimes you got to imagine that they do like you have to imagine that they pay for good reviews on some of these sites uh, and maybe the studio does and they pay for good reviews, right? Like they pay for people to say good stuff about it to curb the negative. And, and that also, I, the other reason I think that too, Brandon, you ever go to a movie on Rotten Tomatoes, which I hate Rotten Tomatoes. I don't use it, but I get annoyed because they shove it like it's some kind of badge of honor when it's fresh and they shove it certified fresh on the front of Blu-ray covers sometimes. Yeah, I don't know who the hell cares about that site or has ever cared about Take it. Take that shit off. The it's only thing, Brandon, the only thing I cared about when I was a kid, and I feel like the narrative on these guys has changed, and it really pisses me off. The only thing I cared about when I was a kid, you might not have even cared about this, Brandon, but I did. When I was a kid, if I saw the quote, like, uh, two thumbs up, Dash, Siskel, and Ebert, I was in. Because I, I my, for some reason, my dad loved Siskel and Ebert, and he taped the show all the time. Before Katrina, he had a shoe boxes because they put all the vhs tapes under the under the bed and shoe boxes i don't know if your family did the same thing but my dad had shoe boxes full of cisco and ebert at the movies and i used to love this segment they would do brandon it was called if we pick the oscars do you remember that no well cisco and ebert basically they went through every category uh for the year and they picked their choices for what should have been best best leading performance best picture best sound Blah, blah blah, and what's so cool? The year of the Silence of the Lambs, they at for their version of if we pick the Oscars, they they did this before the Oscars, and they were right. They said Silence of the Lambs, nothing came close to being as good as this movie. It deserves it. It, it needs to win, and it did win. But I loved Cisco and Eber growing up, and I feel like nowadays people look at those guys as hacks mm -hmm. or something, and I, I don't get it. I thought those guys were really articulate, and whether you agreed with Gene. Because Gene was Gene was the tougher cookie to crack, but I feel like I feel like when Gene liked a movie, he, he he it really worked for him, and he got you excited to go see it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know I don't know if you were if you were into those guys much at all, but for me, dude, they were such a part of my childhood. I loved I loved Cisco and Ebert. Mm -hmm. Uh. 
<clears throat> All right, let me scroll down to the bottom so I can catch up with the chat. Uh, uh, yeah, I keep guys. If you want, uh, if you go to youneedacandles.com, I still have some left. We put out XL wax melts. They're literally they're, they're literally the size of Bonnie Rubble. They're this big. They're massive wax melts. I've got a couple uh, leprechaun. Uh, space size wax melts left and i got some planet chh mega grapes and they smell fantastic go to you need a candles.com and pick yours up uh somebody brought up something else um oh they're talking about the bad movies uh you love that are good no treat no no retreat no surrender you know what that's one of those cases where they shove john claude on the poster he's barely in it mm -hmm. Uh, Jaws the Revenge is a good movie, period. It's period. bizarre. Yeah. It's all about Brandon. I've convinced myself that Jaws the Revenge is about a woman going through schizophrenia. The mom. I mean, when, when there's a shark roaring, it's I schizophrenia. Could agree with you for sure. Yeah. Now, my issue, Brandon, is the television ending is better than the theatrical and the DVD ending. The DVD ending. Mm -hmm. um in the theater in the television ending they 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 spear him with the boat like the he the, the what do you call the front the the bow the bow literally spears the shark and it destroys the boat but the shark gets impaled and in the dvd ending or the home video ending they shove a air cannon or yeah. air tube in his mouth and they they blow it up with sonic with a sonic yeah, wave signal thing. That's the ending I'm used to. I hate it. I hate you that see ending. you see the Bodhi clip and stuff. Yeah, dude, the, I'm the or TV Brody, end. Brody. Yeah, the TV ending is actually really cool. Like when he gets stabbed with the boat, it's way better. You know, I feel like I haven't seen that ending actually. Uh, Garrett says he lo uh, and says I'm in a bad mood because of Roadhouse too. Yeah, nobody seems to like Roadhouse that I've seen. I gotta watch it. I uh, see they shot themselves. I'm gonna go off on a Roadhouse tangent real quick. They he shot he themselves too, in the Brandon. foot. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I know. I was lying about it. Garrett, uh, he actually hates the first <laughs> Ghostbusters movie, the original one. He hates it. There's somebody out there that would say that. I'm sure. First of all, the fact they put it on Prime already lessens the movie for a lot of people. I think. Second of all, why the hell would you make that? Why would you remake Roadhouse? Call it Roadhouse something. Make him call it Roadhouse two. Call it you know have him be Dalton's nephew or something. Don't make it an actual remake. It's the same fucking problem with the Crow. Call it the Crow something. Don't make it Eric Draven. They're shooting themselves in the foot when they don't have to. You know the IP the the IP name has enough weight. If you called it Roadhouse, whatever the fuck, and then had it be Dalton's nephew, people would still be just as interested if it was like in the same world. But the fact that it's a remake turned off a lot of the fan base. And all of us, no matter what we do, we're going to have a little bit of stigma going into a film like that. The same with The Crow. Like, look at City of Angels. Nobody called that movie disrespectful, at least not a lot of them, because it wasn't Eric Draven. It wasn't Brandon Lee's legacy. Why would you? Yeah. Why the hell would they do this? Like Plus the, they had crow, Iggy is, Pop. the <laughs> crow is going to fucking disappear, just like Roadhouse is going to disappear. I see. I just like just, Point Break twenty fifteen. It's going to disappear. You, oh, you mean these remakes are going to disappear? Yes, they're going to fucking disappear. Because I was, was going to say the original. I was talking to Sydney about this and I was like, Sydney, like, I don't know if you want to watch it, but I haven't heard anybody really say that they loved roadhouse. And she was just like, I, she was, I remember she says, I really couldn't think of a worse movie to remake. And mm -hmm. she kind of had a point on a number of levels, right? Cause roadhouse, it's such a movie. When you think about it, it's so anti-technology. It's about, it's about blues rock dive bars. It's about, you know, over the top bar owners who, you know, have, have like beefs with each other. Like it's like the there's, different gangs in the mob. Like there's, it's, there's world famous bouncers for some reason. Like, yeah. The, Terry, there's Terry Funk in the movie. And I love Jake Gyllenhaal. I really do. He's been in some incredible movies and he's been in, he's been in classics, quite frankly, like Donnie Darko and prisoners and nightcrawler. Um, Fuck yeah. Me. He's a great actor. Zodiac. Mm. Zodiac. Crazy movie. 
I love Jake and it's not a slight to him. I, I just honestly think, I honestly think that Patrick Swayze is probably in top 10 of the greatest icons of cinema of all time. He is a star like none other to me. And, um, I don't care what, who you would have gotten. And I understand that Patrick's no longer with us, but you just don't, you, you it's to me, it's almost like a lost cause. To me, Patrick Swayze is an actor uh, that's the equivalent of like a Stallone. Stallone is so identifiable. Trying to redo anything with Stallone is tough. No, Dread pulled it off, but it went in a very different direction. The right direction, quite frankly, because Stallone should not have been in Dread, even though I love that. That's my favorite So Bad It's Good movie because Dread doesn't take his mask off. I, I'm not even a comic book fan, and I know this. Mm. Dread doesn't take his mask off, and, and, and just Stallone's Dread... He has the mask on the first episode, the first, the first reel, and then by the 15 minute mark, he's got it off. But it's, to me, Swayze is an icon. And if you don't believe me, go watch The Outsiders, where you've got Tom Cruise, Emilio Estevez, uh, Patrick Swayze, um, Matt, Dillon. Matt Dillon. Great movie, classic. I love The Outsiders. When Patrick shows up on screen, even though he's not the star, he commands the camera. Commands the scene. He is the biggest, to me, one of the greatest Hollywood icons of all time. Mm -hmm. And you'll never get no. somebody to top Patrick in something. He's unstoppable. So it's, it's, I agree that really Roadhouse is kind of the worst movie to really remake. It's literally a lost cause in a sense. I don't care. Exactly. So I haven't seen the movie. I'm going to see it, but I got to be honest. I I wanted to be excited for it, but when all these reviews came out, I kind of was just like, yeah, I figured. Again, make it a spiritual sequel. Because then you can attack it. Then you, remake. Because then you can approach it differently. You don't have to have your back up against the wall with it. Yeah, and then they could have said that Jake Gyllenhaal was maybe uh what is Patrick Swayze's bouncer friend, the Sam Elliott character? Have him be the nephew of that guy or something. Have it be the same world 40 years removed. Like what? I, I don't understand the logic behind it, especially if it's going straight to prime, which they knew making the movie. Well, now, I mean, you know, you know, they went out of their way, Brandon. Gyllenhaal met with like the, the head of some company that made it. And they're like, we need to put this in theaters. We need to put this in theaters. We need to put this in theaters. And they refused. You know, maybe it's because they saw something that Jake couldn't see. I, I don't know. Uh, again, I'm the biggest jake gyllenhaal fan in the world i, re I really am i love jake uh, it's not a slight to him i just think it's it's patrick swayze yeah you can't do it we're talking about here mm -hmm. you know so i don't know i'm gonna check it out and um but i, I kind of when the reviews came out i was just kind of like yeah I, that's it. what I, that's what i figured that's what i figured like i'm gonna check out the crow also when it comes out but i'm just it's going to be the same situation. Well, you know what Sydney said? I actually agree with this. Sydney thinks Sydney was like, Christian, this movie's going to blow up on TikTok. All the girls are going to be talking about it because, you know, um, Scar's has got that. He's like, he's got that pretty boy. Look, the girls love him. And this is going to be like the new twilight. And I, th I thought that sounded ridiculous at first. No, nope. but I actually I think Sydney's happen. right when I thought about it. And when she said the new twilight, she doesn't mean like, the same kind of movie, but like, it's going to have the same effect. Mm -hmm. And I kind of, I kind of think she's right. Yep. That's what's going to happen. It'll, uh, it's whatever. That's all I can say about it. Yeah. <laughs> what, uh, what, else, what, are, what are the trailers have come up? Oh, Brandon, we got to talk about this. I saw the chat talking about this earlier. Um, they're remaking hardware. That movie didn't even make any money. <laughs> That movie didn't even make any money. Yeah, there's no way. Uh, I do remember when they remade Red Dawn, and I saw the remake before the original. Uh, mm. Obviously, the original with Patrick Swayze as well is sensational. Um, anyway, so apparently, Adam Sandler has already developed a script for Happy Gilmore 2. And I think this is a terrible idea. I got to be honest. I think this is an absolutely terrible idea. I think Sandler had his time in the sun. And that doesn't mean he can't make fun little movies anymore. Uh, I actually enjoyed the one where he's that. He was kind of like a basketball coach to this kind of thuggish guy. 
and tries to help him out and straighten his life out. I thought that was a pretty good movie, but that brand of comedy to me was a young man's game, Brandon. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's going to be weird to see happy Gilmore. It's going to have to be attacked differently for sure. But I got to be honest. I really feel like this is a bad idea and it really is weird, right? For this to come out after the passing of Carl Weathers, obviously there's it's coincidental. I, I would assume if we're hearing about this right now, this has probably been in the works for some time. I don't but, think it'll happen. Really? I don't think it'll happen. Just like Billy Madison two never happened. Literally Billy Madison two was the worst idea ever. Remember he he tell you he announced that a couple of years ago never happened. Dude, just that like is the a, most unsequelable movie of all time. It's just like a, what's his face with Mallrats too. Where the fuck is Mallrats too? You know, um, like they they all these guys announce stuff like this and it never happens. Well, I think they by announcing it they think they'll get the funding for it. I guess I'm surprised we even got Clerks three. I know it's not Adam Sandler, but I mean, where do you where do you sit? Well, I heard. I heard a lot of people say they didn't like Clark's three. Um, but where do you Who's sit? That? Where do you sit with happy Gilmore in terms of classic Adam Sandler? I mean, do you consider it to be one of his best? I'm really not a fan of how happy, happy Gilmore, Billy Madison, wedding singer, stuff like that. I was never really a huge fan of those movies. Uh, as well, lame as that makes me. What? Um, give me, give me some movies around that time. Um, that were Adam Sandler. Uh, yeah. The only Adam Sandler movie around that era that I really enjoyed was Little Nicky. I wasn't a huge fan of what is that dad movie uh, where he played the big, dad? big daddy. Big, I wasn't a huge fan of that movie. I love Big Daddy. I didn't like Click. Uh, Did Little you like? Uh, was probably it, dude. Well, Little Nicky had Roddy Dangerfield. So mm -hmm. literally anybody that doesn't like Little Nicky, that's a that's personal. <laughs> Because Rodney's my hero. Um, do you, are you a Rodney Dangerfield fan, Brandon? I am. Yeah. Let me show you something. Fuck it. Let me show you something. I got this at a uh, comic shop like ten years ago. Yeah. Get the flask. Yeah, that's a fucking fantastic movie. The funniest part of Little Nicky, I swear to God, and I never knew this until like a year ago. But the funniest part of that movie, Christian, is the fact that, okay, now you can hear me. Dude, little Nikki, real quick. The funniest part of that movie to me, I didn't realize this till about a year ago, maybe two, is that Tarantino plays the blind priest guy. I never oh, even dude. realized it, dude. You make the Lord very nervous. That shit is fucking hysterical. <laughs> Holy shit, that shit's so funny. It's a big ride. Yeah, that's awesome. It still works. I think he showed me this before when he was still buried. Your family talks about you in the front of you. You can't even understand it. That's the, so good. Uh, the box is so distorted. Like uh, the voice thing is so distorted. So you just hear, <laughs> but at the very end, you you pick up the. <laughs> but you know, Doctor Vinny Boom Bots, Doctor Vinny Boom Bots, <laughs> you, you pick up a little piece of what he's saying. That's probably worth a lot of money. Uh, yeah, it is a pop culture series. Uh, it's like a giant bobblehead. I need to pull them out the box and display them somewhere, but I'm trying to keep this nice. I love this room, so I'm, but it's nice it's and nice. organized and it's spacious. So I'm trying not to put out too much stuff. Um, but when they announced that, um, or when, when the, when the scoopers announced that, uh, South Park, the 1998 movie was coming out, I had to get myself a little, uh, Carmen. <laughs> Dude, I love the 1998 uh, South Park movie. I saw it in theaters. I'm, I'm not a huge watcher of the show. Obviously, I've, I've seen a lot of episodes as a kid, but like the movie was my shit. Yeah, we saw the movie in theaters. I was never a huge fan of the show. I liked season one, but uh, I really didn't like that kind of humor. That sort of permeated humor ever since South Park. I call it the South Park era. But anyways, uh, the movie was better than the show. But I really did like that N64 game uh, with the turkeys. Do you remember that one? The South oh, Park yes. turkey, dude. You throw the pea snowballs and shit. Great game. 
uh, Akeem brings up uh, Mr. Deeds, and I feel like that movie's kind of slept on nowadays, but I actually, I think that one's hysterical. That movie was okay. That's where he has all the money, right? And Steve Buscemi has the Corvettes, right? That's that movie? Yeah, Steve Buscemi's yeah. Uh, Crazy Eyes. Right. Pe that oh, movie was okay. Peanut butter, and, peanut butter and gumballs. Good yeah. job, Deeds. <laughs> Holy Christ, these things are fast. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the lift, Deeds. <laughs> you know what my favorite Adam Sandler movie is? Uh, it's gonna it's gonna punch drunk it. love it's a movie he wasn't even in it's a <laughs> it's a happy madison production oh let he... me guess let me guess let me guess is it old school or new school neither it's vintage it's 10 years old it's it's holy shit it's 18 years old now holy shit we need a sequel bad 18 years old it's a Happy Madison production. He's not in the movie, as far as I can tell. Classic, Joe Dirt? especially in my stoner college years, dude. Classic, hysterical. The comedy's aged perfectly. Joe Dirt? No, it is one of the most bizarre. Oh, wait, Ian oh, lives. Oh, got oh, it. oh, Grandma's Boy. Yeah, dude, I love. It. I got the soundtrack, dude. It's so good. That movie is fan. Grandma's fantastic. Boy, dude. That movie, so. The guy who starred in it was did a did a podcast, and like they had a meeting with the studio when they were releasing it in theaters, and like the producer of the, of like the production company was like, "All right, so this movie's gonna tank," <laughs> and it did, and then it made like I don't know, like I think they said it made like sixty five million dollars on DVD. <laughs> Oh, look at the chat they're going crazy bro. that's like i don't they care what people say like boy. people say pineapple express and shit no grandma's, no, grandma's boy, boy. Stoner classic but see brandon here's the thing you're wrong about a sequel like you cannot touch grandma's boy some things have to be left untouched well then give me a dante spinoff you know what i mean give me something in that same world give me a uh what is his name yeah. dr dr shaka zulu yeah. give me a spinoff with that dude give me something <laughs> in the world of yeah during COVID, they made a cartoon sequel. It was like a five-minute little cartoon produced by Happy Madison. It's bizarre. But does Happy Madison still have – do they still have – my question is like – obviously, like you said, that's that's Adam's production company. But do you feel like they still have the pulse on humor anymore? And then the second question is not only what is funny, but what can we laugh about? You know, that's the biggest issue today. Um, yeah. is, is it's, it's not even necessarily what can we laugh about? It's what's going to gain traction on the internet as, oh yeah, this is definitely inappropriate. It's just like yeah. some stuff it's beyond effed up and I get it. But like at the same time, it's just like, let, let jokes be jokes at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And like, but, it, but the thing that sucks, like if people, like this is why Billy Madison too couldn't work. Right. You have to have, you would have to have Norm Macdonald every 35 minutes show up for 18 seconds sitting on a lawn chair looking high as fuck and saying something funny because I don't think people realize how important those moments were in Billy Madison with, with Norm, especially with the pickles. Like, come on. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think if you were going to do one, it's like, I, I don't know, Brandon. I just feel like it's a bad idea. Like mm -hmm. as much as I love, I love happy Gilmore. I think happy Gilmore is great, especially the part. <laughs> I don't see how you can't laugh at this when Chubbs Peterson is trying to get him to join the, the PGA tour. And he goes, man, if you win, they give you a gold jacket and he takes his hockey stick. He goes, gold jacket, green jacket. Who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> his, his hand flies in the road and he's like don't worry about it made of wood it's real sturdy <laughs> and the truck runs it over <laughs> like come on that shit and you know what's funny brandon how big did carl weathers look in that movie next to like regular people like mm -hmm. it makes me wonder was stallone wearing platforms <laughs> in rocky because i can't imagine stallone is taller than adam sandler <laughs> Yeah, I mean Adam Sandler is a really, really tall dude too, isn't he? In real life, and he—I think he's probably six one. I thought he was like six three, six four. Stallone is supposed to be five ten, mm. like on barefoot around five ten. 
That's, that's everything bizarre, I've heard. dude. That's because he looks like he's fucking tall, especially in Tulsa King. He looks like a giant tall dude. Well, it's he so knows weird. Stallone knows how to shoot his movies mm, to make yeah. himself look like a monster. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I what's the last and for the chat for you guys. Tell me the last great comedy that you think you saw and be really honest with yourselves where it was like genuinely gut bustingly funny. I, and I think for a lot of people, the answer is Step Brothers it was like the one because it's so quotable. People talk about it till this very day is still like one of the last extremely great comedies. And I um, real quick. I can't. Think I, of I see some people saying "Hot Tub Time Machine." I thought "Hot Tub Time Machine" was pretty, pretty damn funny. And Chevy Chase is in that. Brandon, remember he shows up every day. He's the he's the hot tub repair man. Um, this is a tough question, dude. Because I haven't really found. Again, I'm lame. I haven't found a lot of comedies in the last 20 years to be really that funny. Dude, Trop Gar Gar said Tropic Thunder. Tropic Thunder is Dude, Tropic Thunder. Have you seen Tropic Thunder, Brandon? I've never seen more than 10 minutes. Isn't that Dude, great? Dude, I don't know. I don't know how Ben Stiller is not put in jail for Tropic Thunder. And, you know, I, I to put it like this, Brandon, Robert Downey Jr. played a black guy in the movie. And what Ben Stiller did <laughs> was even worse than doing that. <laughs> he plays a dude. <laughs> somebody that's seen Tropic Thunder. Please tell me what the name of the movie is in the movie. Cause it's slipping me. What is the name of the movie in the movie? <laughs> Brandon, you have got to see Tropic Thunder. I know you, you have got it. Brandon, they don't give a fuck in Tropic Thunder. Simple Jack, Simple Jack. <laughs> Brandon, you have got to see Tropic Thunder. I've never seen a movie be this fucking insane before. Let me see if I can show you something. Uh, you know what? I'm not even going to show you. I'm going to let you wait. You have to watch it. You know what? I think uh, <laughs> this is off topic, dude. Go ahead. Go it, ahead. Uh, Super bad from 2007. Mm -hmm. When it first came out, I thought it was hysterical. Through college, I thought it was hysterical. I watched Super Bad about a year ago. It is so awkward now. <laughs> Do you it's think unfunny it's funny and awkward? Well, do you let's be honest. Do you think you aged out? Probably, but it's there's a lot of comedies that I sort of think I aged out of, but for some reason in that movie it just feels so uncomfortable to watch. And I'm like, how the fuck did I think this was funny? It's bizarre. <laughs> like, I don't know if anybody else has it. See, that's experience. see, that's funny in and of itself. <laughs> it's just I was I'm just, I couldn't believe it. What do you I, think I, is what do you think is the greatest comedy of all time? Because I have a, I have an immediate, like gun to the head, I have an immediate answer. I don't know if anybody in the chat would agree with me, but I think you would not be, I, I don't think you'd be upset with my pick. To me, the greatest comedy of all time is National Lampoon's Vacation. I think every time I watch it, I, I laugh. Some in, in one scene or another, I openly laugh by myself, whether it's, whether it's uh, the real tomato ketchup, Ed, or when they when they hit the they, they hit the sand dunes yeah. and they 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 throw the they throw the family truckster off and they wreck, <laughs> like or they have the grandma tied on top yeah. of the family. Like That's... in some scene, wait, another Brandon. I literally bust my gut watching Vacation, and I know I'm a Chevy Chase Mark, but I mean seriously, I I to me, hands down, that is the most rewatch the most. Out laugh out loud comedy to me always has been, but what that's a great do choice. you have a do you have a pick? I don't know. I'm gonna have to think about that for a while. If some I people tell you this, Ace Ventura, 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 that scene where he's where it pans from the the whole the sleeping car and it pans to him asleep at the wheel. I fucking die laughing every <laughs> just, time I watch that movie, dude. That's what I'm saying. Like laugh out loud, funny. 
Or, or, you know, like even even when it gets slapstick over the top, because there are moments that there are setups in that movie that are genuinely well written and well thought out. And then there's also scenes in that movie that are so stupid, like when they bring Chevy's original car back out after he refuses the family truckster, and it's flattened and he's still he's looking at it. And like it's so it's so Saturday Night Live, Saturday Night Live where he goes to open the car door, even though it's cars like this, you know. Like I just I it's to me that's the best. But um somebody was saying Caddyshack and I I'd put that in the top ten as well. Um but I think I don't know. Here's the thing, Brandon. Which decade is better for comedy? The eighties or the nineties? Cause I think there really is no wrong answer. But I think the nineties had j- probably more iconic night comedies than the eighties. In my opinion, like I could probably name you 10 90s comedies that are all timers. Tommy Boy, Dirty Work, which is iconic, even though Black Sheep. Black Sheep. Um, I'd throw Happy Gilmore in there. Uh, Dumb and Dumber, Ace Ventura. Half of them would be Adam, would be uh Jim Carrey movies. The Mask. To me, the mask is to me, the mask is Jim's best movie he's ever done, comedy wise. I, I think the mask is incredible. Um but I think the '90s has more iconic mm-hmm. comedies, but I don't know how you feel about that. I would say so. Probably the '90s. It seems so sacrilegious, but I don't know. You got me with that favorite comedy of all time. Like I'm having trouble coming up with one answer for that. You gotta have, have one. To, I'll have to come back to it. Because, like, I want to say Wayne's World, but I know that's not the funniest movie I've seen. It's hard to say, man. Vacation's a great answer, but that probably wouldn't be my answer either. I don't know what the fuck would be the answer. I don't know. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, says Jesse Swarbert. That's a good choice, too, but the problem with that is it's such a soulful, heartfelt movie, too. There's a lot of sad moments and stuff. It's not really a straightforward comedy. Like, I'm looking for that all-time belly bursting comedy see that's that that's another reason i love vacation is i don't i don't need to be in a good mood to watch it i don't need to be in a bad mood to watch it like planes trains and automobiles you watch it during a holiday and i feel like that kind of takes some precedent over it not in a negative way but it's 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 meant to make you feel good and laugh Mm -hmm. but like with vacation literally i could have i could be in a good mood and laugh at it i could be in a bad mood and laugh. it's just it doesn't matter um, Mrs. Doubtfire is a great answer. Mm-hmm. Uh, Robin Williams was hysterical. Um, Dumb and Dumber. Cable, cable Guy is great. Uh, uh, Dave brings up Cable Guy. Cable, cable Guy. But here's the thing about Cable Guy, Brandon. Tell me why I would change my mind on whether I liked it or didn't like it. Like watching it four times in a row. Like I would say I liked it. Then I'd watch it again and be like, hmm. And then I'd watch it again and be like, I'm an idiot. This is brilliant. This is actually, this is actually one of Jim's. He's playing a psycho and it's hysterical. But like, why do I keep flip-flopping on it? I don't know. Were you like that with that movie? Or uh no, I love this since day one. Uh when it came out, my mom and I wanted to see it in theaters. Uh by the time we went to go see it, it was for some reason not in theaters anymore. I don't think it had a very long run. I don't think it was well received if memory serves. It was terribly advertised. It was advertised as a straightforward comedy. It's it kind should of have, it it's should really have been advertised like a, as a, like a black movie. dark comedy, right? Like it's like it's not a comedy really. It's a black comedy at best. Well, I I that I agree with you. I feel like it's like I a feel thriller. like I feel like Jim kind of pulled the wool over yeah. maybe even the production of what he was doing with that. <laughs> Maybe that's the problem a lot of people have. It's 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 not enough of either thing. Like maybe it should have gone more into the th- the crazy thriller, psycho horror elements, and maybe it should have been more funny. I think it's hysterical, but he's a really uncomfortable fucking character in that movie. Too. He is, yeah. And so. uh, you know that that could be what was what 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 I once I learned to embrace that, you know. Nothing but trouble. We got to talk about nothing but trouble for a second. Um, I love nothing but trouble. That's a horror movie. <laughs> With the judge. I mean, Jesus. Great movie. Uh, real quick. 
Christian, I want to interrupt you real quick. You want to see something hilarious? Please. It's kind of weird, but it's hilarious. I want to show it on camera one last time before it explodes. Ready? Look at this, dude. This oh, is that Shanna? Dude, look at that. Oh, she's ready to have that baby. Dude, this is going to explode. <laughs> it's right here. It's like an Easter egg. So I just wanted Damn. to show that off real quick. That's the thing right there. I did that. You know, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Shanna. I got to tell you, she's probably done. Oh, she's done. She's ready for it to be out of there. <laughs> what are you going to do if it's twins somehow? And I keep saying that. I'm like, it'd be funny as shit if it comes out and there's twins in there. There's apparently no way that could happen, but if it happens, I'll be happy. You know, get the whole damn roost done in one fell swoop, you know, but. Uh, oh, man. I'm excited for you guys. I hope, thank, ob thank obviously, you. I hope everything goes perfectly smooth and, you know. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, Thursday's the day, dude. We got moved up. From, so what uh, date is that? My birthday is April 8th. That's April not 8th. next Thursday, is it? April 8th? No, next Thursday will be the 28th. So oh, it, won't even, it won't even be April yet. Okay. Yeah, it'll be March. It'll be a spring baby right in right in time for Easter. We'll probably get discharged on Easter. So You got a name? Cool. It's going to be Mia. Well, shit. We're trying to keep it a secret from everybody. Nobody watches the show. It's going to be Mia, Rose, Tamara. I like, how, I like how you're saying it quieter <laughs> the second time. <laughs> yeah. Nobody we know watches the show. So we're trying to keep it a surprise from every, all of the family. But none okay. of them was watching the show at this time of night anyway. So... It'll it's okay, fine. So. I don't know your family, so I doubt that they're watching this. Because <laughs> we've been telling Isabella, don't tell anybody yet, because it's a surprise. So I just, uh, for, I just well, for the record, up. for the record, I think that's a great name. Um, I don't know what it is, and my band doesn't watch this sh my show that much either. But some of my bandmates they gave their kids ridiculous names, and I'm like, you realize they're going to grow up, <laughs> and they have to have that name. <laughs> I'm sure you've probably seen your friends do the same shit. Mm -hmm. So, how does it feel to have 22k? I know we've already kind of touched on this, but uh, that's got to be crazy. Because again, like I have, well, your channel has that many subs. Yeah, but again, like that's my other channel, and like it's not, it's based on my movies and stuff, so it's not really like an interactive audience. You know what I mean? It's not the same kind of thing. <laughs> I'm sorry, that just made me laugh. Uh, oh yeah, Mick Horror, I got it down, man. It's it's. It's um, there. I'm, 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 I feel good, Brandon. You know, like I said, I, I've been put, I put in a lot of, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are probably be like, do Christian, you upload too much, but that's just the only way I know how to grow. You know, um, I try to figure out the algorithm and how to make, I try to just make content that I think people are interested in. Number one, it's stuff I enjoy talking about. And I, I'll tell you, Brandon, I don't know if you've noticed, um, cause I'm not jaded to think my friends just watch we're all doing our thing and especially YouTubers as well. We don't have time to watch everybody's stuff, mm -hmm. but I've really gone out of my way to actually be about it and not just say I was going to do it. You know, I, I rebranded it. I rebranded my channel a year or so ago because I wanted to be able to talk about the things we're talking about tonight as well as horror. Cause God knows I still talk about horror for like four times a week on the channel more than anything, but I've really made it a concerted effort to do a lot of shorts about movies that aren't horror. Like I did one on Congo yesterday. I've done a couple on the Flintstones. I've done some on uh, Matinee, my, my one of my favorite John Goodman movies, and I talk about other movies. So I've done, I've really done that on the shorts. And that's, I feel like I have a different shorts. You may notice this too. I feel like I have a different shorts audience than video audience. Like a lot of comments I see on shorts are different people. And I, I don't think that's a bad thing because I, I, I love making shorts and um, I have I can really have freedom with that, right? Because I feel like there's almost no harm, no foul with the shorts. Um, so, you know, I, I'm I, I like what I'm doing. I like what my what my channel is. And um, nobody's hit me up saying like, Christian, are you done with horror? It's ridiculous. Of course not. Uh, but. I, I, nobody's given me any guff about what I am doing, even though it wouldn't really sway me either way. I just, I'm, I'm very happy that people seem to be really digging it because I always tell myself, Christian, everybody watches all kinds of movies. Odds are, if you talk about Congo for a short, some of your viewers have seen the goddamn movie Congo, mm -hmm. just do it. 
make the short. Yeah. So I had to get over that hump. And I feel that this last time is the last time I genuinely got over it. Like I would kind of approach it a little bit here and there. Like I have, I, I recorded six videos the other day. I, if all my patrons have access to them already, but like I knocked them out and I have some really cool videos. One of them is uh, about uh, classic TV shows on DVD box sets. And mm -hmm. like, I, I'm going to, I'm excited to put that out because people are going to get to see what I watch like all my favorite TV shows and stuff like that. So it's been, a, it's been, it's been great. It's been great. And I'm very happy and it feels good, but, um, you know, I, you can't let it, I, I'm sure you feel the same way when you got a channel that got to that size too. You can't really let it get to you or make it make you think like you're somebody. Cause I see that happen sometimes with people, you know, they think their opinion is a little bit more important. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I always remind myself, you, you're no better than anybody, Christian. Nobody. So, yeah, anyway. The key, to, the key is to stay humble. Yeah. Yeah, I saw your video about, uh, not to go off topic, but you were talking about the, I think it's a recent video, you were talking about the sitcom, and there's not really... It's dead. The art of the great sit Like, the art of the sitcom in the, in the sense that it was so inwoven in our lives, we grew up learning life lessons from shows like Roseanne. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. uh, you know, shows like that, specifically Roseanne for me, because my family was kind of like that. You know, yeah. we went through, we went through trials and tribulations, middle-class family. And I feel like that's gone. I don't know how you feel, but like, to me, no, it's I mean, just the, dead and gone. The last one I can think of that I even, that the family watched, that I watched actively was that 70s show, you know, to an extent stuff like Drew Carey, but that ended a little bit before, uh, that 70s show. It's just bizarre. I know there's stuff like what is it called? Big Bang Theory and stuff. I've seen a couple episodes. Eh. I didn't get um, it. I didn't get it. I wasn't I a huge it. fan. Um, I know it was insanely popular, but I think even that's been over for a while. What else is there really? You know? Well, and then there everything's rebooted. I'm sorry. I mean no disrespect whatsoever. I'm a that 70s show fan. I know you're a bigger fan than me. I really could not stand that 90s show. I thought really? it was I thought it was garbage. It oh, was it nice. was safe. It didn't feel dangerous like that 70s show. Uh it didn't feel like the 90s. And even though I was a kid, Brandon, I lived it. That I didn't feel it, brother. It um that 70s show, I wasn't there, but I don't know. I just feel like that 70s show, like even though he's a he got in trouble and he's can't he can't be the Danny guy. He can't even be in the '90s show. Mm -hmm. He looks exactly like Eric Bloom from Blue Oyster Cult. Yeah, look up Eric Danny. Bloom from Blue Oyster Cult. He looks exactly like Danny Masterson no, in that right. '70s show. So I feel like that '70s show. Even though I wasn't there, somebody from the '70s that was alive, please tell me I'm not wrong. I just I didn't I it wasn't jiving with me, Brandon. It and also, also, you know what they should do? I'm sorry. I was gonna say, if you're gonna make it that '90s show, film the shit in four three, and put it yeah. on Netflix like that. Oh, they can't do it now. They won't do that. But you agree? You're the guy that yeah. says put a grain filter on it. It's a, it's oh, a yeah. four star. Movie. It uh, it doesn't feel like the '90s. They don't do enough to inject the '90s. I get it. I agree. But uh, there's just well, something. Give the so, kid a uh, Game Boy. Put a Game Boy in the kid's hand. I just liked. Uh, there's something endearing about it. I like. I think the main character. She's pretty good. I like Kitty and Red are hilarious. There's just something I like. I'm looking forward to season two. But I get the complaints. I did get you it. watch The Ranch? I did not, no. I like that. I don't know if you call that a sitcom. I guess you do. But it was very, it was about real life problems that they were going through. And that had Sam Elliott in it, Ashton mm -hmm. Kutcher. It actually had a lot of that 70s alum. Masterson was in it. He left at a certain point. They killed I've off seen that episode. But I actually liked if you consider that a sitcom, which I guess technically it is, there's definitely a laugh track to it. I did like that, even though I didn't relate to it at all because I didn't live that ranch lifestyle. I did like that. We got a we got a four ninety nine from Antana Sandriotis. Did you guys see the Chucky season three part two trailer? I did not. I haven't seen Chucky season two, although people have told me three is so crazy. You got to see it. I'm assuming you haven't either, Brandon. I could give a rat's ass about that show. I'm lame. I feel the same way, but. People like Akeem and others were telling me, like Christian, 
Chucky season three is so insane. You have to see it. And I want to see it, but I keep saying to myself, well, damn, I, I don't want to just see that. I, I want to have to, I don't, I don't want to miss anything, but I really don't want to see season two because nobody has told me season two was good. And Beetlejuice two tra teaser trailer yet. We'll talk about that in just a second. Let me go through some of the chat and then we'll cover that. So thank you so much. And Thomas, let me give you a little clip. It's top 10 slashers. Okay. Top 10 slashers. I think number 10 is going to be Valentine. Valentine at number 10? Valentine at number 10. Explain yourself. You know how many great slasher films there are, and you just put Valentine in your top 10. Valentine is a fantastic slasher. Tell me about it. Good stuff. That's such a good clip. You, I love how I'm just yelling at you. You don't give a fuck. <laughs> excuse me uh, I didn't even know there was a 90s show there is I loved it it's fair enough good. fair enough it just it was not for me um, two and a half men was good I never saw it I talked about dinosaurs on a short J 666 and I talked about how I thought Brandon do you ever have this moment maybe you have I did a YouTube short on dinosaurs and I said, have you ever watched something when you were really little? And then when you were older, you thought you think you imagined you saw it and you think it might've just been a fever dream that you've cooked up in your head, but then you realize it was real to me. That's dinosaurs, the show. And I got, I remember I, I finally looked it up years ago, like 2006 or something when I was on the computer and I was like, no, I did watch a show of dinosaurs wearing flannel shirts, going mm -hmm. to work with a lunchbox. Yep. And then I got the seasons on DVD. I think I showed them to you like maybe six, four or five months ago. I bought them at Walmart. I was like, guys, look at this. And um, dude, the ending of the show is. is, is oh, the end bleak. Of <laughs> it's, it's the end for them, man. But dude, those dinosaur designs are. I think that was Stan Winston. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like those dinosaur like designs are so cool. So it looks great. Um, but anyway, Brandon, do you have any thoughts on uh, Beetlejuice 2? I do. I have a lot of thoughts on that. That um, Going back to my issues with the Romulus teaser, the teaser for Beetlejuice Beetlejuice is an example of a teaser trailer done right. Perfectly sets the mood. Great music. Hooks you. Shows you a glimpse of the characters. Very minute shot of Beetlejuice. The wide shot where he says the juice is loose and the, the one like the one second shot of his up close of his face. That movie, I am so hooked and ready for Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. That trailer really, really flipped my lunch tray. Like that's perfect. And Didn't it showed too much. And it's a genuine sequel. It's a genuine sequel. Yep. Which is a lost heart. <laughs> no, it is. Because yeah, they could have just fucking called it Beetlejuice if they wanted to. I'm so glad they didn't do that. Like Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice is perfect. Because now if they make a part three, it could Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Like perfect. Um. Yeah, I'm excited for it too. Uh, I think. I think it's great that Michael Keaton's doing one of his iconic roles again. And he's um, been wanting to do that for 30 years. And and I I'm a big Jenna Ortega fan. It's funny. I had a conversation with, I think it was Nick. I had a conversation about with this. I was like, I can't look at this. I, it's funny because I see, I'm not shaming per se, but I see people be like, oh, she's hot. She's to me. She just looks like a kid. I think she's a cute kid, but I, I think she's a really good actor. I love her Wednesday. So like, to me, she's just like one of those younger actors. I just think is really good at playing these kind of dark witty characters. And she's perfect for this kind of movie and she is kind of like maybe that latter day winona rider type uh that kind of like goth kind of that girl so i'm glad she's in it i think this is great and um of course seeing winona i mean come on renona rider and christina ricci are kind of like the two guy girls that i think we all grew up uh, she would do winona rider was smoking hot in um mr deeds as mm -hmm. babe bennett Remember? Well, they were they were like you just mentioned Christina Ricci and her. They were like the original goth girls, if you will. You right. know, like that. They were dude Winona in like Heather's, which Heather's is like 
one of those great movies that people can't really decide what genre the movie is. Screwed up. Some people will say, oh, dude, when, Heathers is a horror movie. But, like, on paper, it's not. And that's one of the big arguments people have. It's like, you can tell if it's horror. If, you, if, you're, if you're wondering if it's horror or not, you got to look at it through the aspect of the writing. And, and when it comes to the writing, I don't know. I think it really just depends on how somebody can visually interpret it. But regardless, I think Heathers is one of the best. It's like an A24 movie before A24, right? Like it's one of those, it's just such a, it's such a gripping subject matter that no big studio would really want to tackle. Mm. That's a great movie. Didn't they make that into a TV show and it was like a write up comedy? It was like straightforward comedy or something like recently. I don't know. I, if they did, I'm glad I avoided it. Yeah, um, well, yeah dude. I Beetlejuice know. two is gonna rock. I, I agree. I think. I think. I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be great. And I think. I think uh, Keaton is gonna kill it. I think Keaton's gonna do a great job. Um, I think he should come back and be Batman one more time. He should in a, in an actual Batman film, not the Flash, not Batman Beyond. As much as I want to see that too, I want a straightforward Batman movie. With him as old man Batman. Call me a grouch, Brandon. Call me grumpy. Like I, I don't like Batman movies at all. But eighty, and I, I'm not even a big Batman Returns fan. Damn, Batman eighty nine to me is literally just the perfect flavor. Mm. I just love it. I mean, to me, Nicholson. That's my Joker. Even though I agree that Heath Ledger gave, he was incredible. It's just a taste thing for me. It's just mm. it's just a taste. I agree that Ledger was the the most incredible thing. I, yeah, I but Jack Nicholson that. just feels like the Joker, though. But see, Jack Nicholson because he played he played this gangster, mm-hmm. you know. And I'm a Nicholson Mark. I mean, who doesn't love Jack Nicholson? It's weird That's sometimes. The, or go ahead, go ahead. I'll say that my husband in a minute. No, I was going to say that. Go ahead, because I'm going to go off into a tangent. Go, I, I was, I'm go just going to say that in in Batman. Jack Nicholson doesn't feel like he's playing the Joker. He just feels like he's being his true self. And that's, that's pretending that's, to be the Joker. That's what it feels like. Well, and a mean? lot of times, a lot of times, that's when you get the best performances. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, he fucking killed it as the Joker. Like I feel like Nicholson is one of those actors too that can do any genre. He can. And I almost feel like you you don't see that as much anymore, right? Like, give me give me some, give me an actor that can do it all and do it great i would say the only person right now that can do it all is dicaprio and even that's kind of pushing it you know who probably could do a great horror film but the 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 writing would have to be literally perfect and it'd have to have a great budget and i'm talking a real horror film not a big hollywood monster type movie like the mummy but i think and he kind of did in terms of like intensity is, is Tom Cruise. Like if you look at Vanilla Sky, I, was gonna I say, mean, that's some, that's some dark shit. Vanilla Sky. I won't say the condition I was under, but one of the first times I saw that movie scared the shit out of me. Like the scene where he sees his face and he's sort of like hallucinating and like he's screaming on the floor and it pulls away from him really quickly. That shit really freaked me out. There's a lot of really scary cerebral stuff in Vanilla Sky. It's not a horror movie. It's not even really a thriller. But there's some very I shouldn't say scary. There's a lot of unnerving Unner- yeah. imagery in that film and s- situations. It's sort of like a, it's, it's almost Jacob's Ladderish. Yeah, yeah. It was I was gonna say that, or it's almost David Lynch horror. Where David he Lynch, doesn't make yeah. he doesn't make horror films, but randomly yeah. something happens where you're like, oh my oh god. Like yep. where you just go boom and you get this intense, yeah, gripping. It's very, uh, it's very Lynch like. You're right. That's a great fucking. That's a very underrated Tom Cruise movie. I got the soundtrack. It's killer too. Oh, the soundtrack to Vanilla Sky is amazing. I will say though, you know, when they were gonna have that big monster, monster verse, universal monster verse mm-hmm. thing happen, I should say, where they're gonna bring back the, um, you know, they say that the mummy with Tom Cruise when it underperformed, it did, did not meet expectations of what they wanted kind of killed that, even though we got the invisible man, I really wanted to like that mummy movie. I, I really did not like it whatsoever. Really? See, I loved it. 
I would take the Brendan Fraser. Oh, um, so would I for sure. But I um, what didn't you like about the Tom Cruise mummy? Because I thought it was pretty good. It was sort of small scale. The mummy herself was kind of annoying, but I thought he was really cool. I liked when he got the sharp teeth. I thought I don't know. It I liked the bar brawler Jekyll and stuff, Mr. Hyde. I loved all that shit. A little bit on the nose. It didn't, it it just did not work for me at all. And I, I would say, I would say, I, I, I think, see, I don't, I, I don't think he was right for that kind of movie either. Tell me, tell me Tom wouldn't be a great Dr. Frankenstein probably would be i mean i think he could i mean if 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 he can win over Anne rice he could yeah. win over me as well I, I mean imagine him playing a great dr frankenstein i mean seriously i think that's where tom would have really shined in a universal monster film or a jekyll and hyde when's the last time a great jekyll and hyde movies come out brandon uh mary riley was the last one and what year was that 96 97 like that could be a like that could be great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he would probably be killer as that. You know what I'm saying? He needs to really spread his wings with a role in this. And yeah. uh, I think he could be great with Frank if he was the doctor, but like imagine him as a if he could play a Jekyll and Hyde, that would be incredible. Dude, now you know that, that Lestat rage, dude, it'd be terrific. Now they're they're making we Lee Winnell is making the Wolfman, mm-hmm. which the it's crazy. We had Wolf the wolfman from 2010 it's fine but it's way too much meddling i mean they hired the great one of the greatest effects artists of our day rick baker and then they completely like why my my biggest problem now is universal has this arsenal at their fingertips and like they they flubbed it with the 2017 dark universe which never got off the ground because of the mummy they canceled it okay that's fine then they randomly come out with the Invisible Man, which is not connected to that universe, but it's not the starting point for a new one. Right. Dracula Untold went nowhere. I'm assuming this new Wolfman is not part of the Invisible Man franchise. So like they just keep coming out with these weird one-offs and like yeah, franchise. Yeah. Like, I don't, what are they doing? They just need to. They need to just shoot all of them at one time. Exactly. And don't build it as a dark universe. Like, let them breathe on their own and then make your crossover event. You know, whatever you want to do, like, buy the rights to the Monster Squad and make that the crossover event that they're all build, building to. If they really want to have that, like, staple movie, if they want their end game, buy the fucking rights to Monster Squad well, and make that the final movie. It, it's weird, too, because, like, we, we've been talking about how we think remakes are just such a lost cause in a sense today, but imagine how suspenseful you could make, uh, but again, they'd probably CGI the shit out of it. Like imagine how suspenseful you could make a creature from the black lagoon today. Mm -hmm. I mean, genuinely suspenseful. I think Carpenter wanted to do that. And I think he even tried at a certain point, but I think universal was like, eh, but I don't know, Brandon, but then again, you know what, dude, they could do all this stuff and we could, we could just say, you know what? It's all right, but it's not better than. That's the thing is the public taste. Do we even care about that kind of stuff anymore? Because we have such icons. I say yes and no. I say yes in the sense that people would be interested, but no, in the sense of the names of these movies, I think you have to trick people and to see in these movies. I really do. I think you have to trick modern audiences and sometimes it works, Brandon. Sometimes it does work. It didn't work with last voyage of the Demeter. Cause quite frankly, that sounds like more of a hammer title than anything. And it's too many words. It, yeah. It's too many. Voyage is not a, is not a, and Demeter is hard to say. Like if, if you're a yeah. kid in target, they're not gonna know what the hell that says. Yeah. I, I enjoyed that movie quite a lot. Uh, it definitely felt old school, but uh, it, it gave you non-human Dracula, the entirety it. of it. So I really enjoy. It's on Peacock. If you haven't, did you see it or did you not see? I've not seen it yet. It's on Peacock. I'll watch it. Yeah, I think it's a gorgeous movie. And He's straight up in Nosferatu mode the whole time, right? Gargoyle mode, <laughs> the, gargoyle mode the whole time. But I think, I think these movies can work. But you kind of got to trick the younger generations mm. 
really including our generation to millennials to see them. You got to trick them. You can't just call them dry. You have to trick them and give them something different. Um, another thing we should mention too is Salem's lot is going straight to streaming. That bums me out, dude. It does, but it also doesn't, right? It's kind of nice. Like now that, now that the theaters are back, it does kind of feel a little bit good. I actually think this is a response to the rise of cinemas again. And these, yeah. these companies are like, well, we got to have some stuff for our streaming sites. I almost feel like this is a, is a response to that. And I get it. I'd rather stay home too, but I'm starting to get back to that mode where it feels less prestigious if it's not going to cinemas first. I'm getting that weird mindset again. And like, I feel like Salem's lot should be and could be a huge staple IP. And I feel like it's just going to home video. It's sort of, it's not not going anywhere. I mean, Dune took off on home on, you know, on, streaming platforms but it's just i don't know i just dune, dune was a very big risk because i i tell i tell people like you gotta understand nothing really happens in dune it's definitely a starter film it's a prologue yeah yes. and it, but dude it's done so it's it's so gorgeous to look at and the mood is so intense that I, I, I'm I'm expecting, and I've heard literally nothing but incredible things. But like, I'm expecting Dune Two to be one of the best movies I've ever seen. Like, I really I've am. I've heard great things about it. You know, Dune One makes you feel like you're on drugs without being on <laughs> drugs. It's just so good. I agree. I, but back to Salem's Lot, dude. If I, I just want to see that Nosferatu style Count Barlow, the Barlow, yeah, on a huge fifty foot screen. If that's if if they're even going to do that, I don't know. <laughs> I think I think people forget how good Salem's Lot really is because okay. it's they don't go back and revisit it that often because it is a chore, mm -hmm. you know. But some of the stuff that happens in Salem's Lot is Metropolis says Dune Two is incredible, dude. Like there are there are a couple literally iconic shots in Salem's Lot, like all timers, like. You know, the kid at the window floating, scratching sure. the glass. Like, dude, that I think is, I, I think it actually was in the Shutter show, but I think that's one of the scariest like moments mm -hmm. in horror history. I mean, it really is fucking freaky. I want you to imagine you were just like, you fall asleep on the couch in your house and it's dark. And for some reason, you wake up and the TV's on and that's just happening. The kids, <laughs> like, dude, that would. You know, Isabella does that every night at three in the morning. She's just like, you, know. <laughs> well, you better get that. You better, you better Are get you, that checked out. <laughs> I know. Are you a defender of, 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 um, return, return to Salem's, Salem's lot? lot? Yeah. Cause Larry Cohen can do no wrong in my eyes. Do you like the look of the, the count in that movie? What the hell's his name? The big blue looking thing. Yes. What the hell's his name in that movie? I forget. I I'm serious. Larry Cohen can do no wrong in my eyes. And, but, and, and, and seriously return to Salem's lot does not impede or really directly try to disrespect Salem's lot. The original, I think it's just, it's, Hey, let's have fun. It's gremlins too. In my eyes, in the sense that it's like, let's just, let's just, let's just show our butt. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how I feel about return to Salem's lot. And Michael Moriarty can do no wrong either. So is it, it I think that's the best way to approach sequels sometimes. I really do. Like, you can almost argue Texas Chainsaw 2 is like that, although Toby wouldn't, because he'll tell you that Texas Chainsaw is funny, even though we're Friday all terrified, too. even though even though we're all terrified by Texas Chainsaw. He thinks it's funny. But clearly in part two, he was like, let me really push it so people can just have a good time and laugh. But I think Return of Salem's Lot was approached perfectly. Mm-hmm. Now it's not going to work for people, but I think it's funny, and I love the look of those blue, you know, vampire. I, I I like it. I like it. I remember when Scream Factory announced it, I was really excited because Brandon, you couldn't find that movie for a while. Like you mm -hmm. couldn't, you couldn't find it. You couldn't stream it or anything. Yeah, you know. Uh, JG said there was a Hammer Jekyll and Hyde movie last year. Well, I haven't even heard of it or seen it, so that should tell you how well they're marketing Hammer stuff nowadays. I think the the only Hammer movie I've seen that was promoted was of uh, the Lodge. Mm. You know what sucks, dude? It's sort of a lost cause, but I feel like in the '90s we had a really good run 
And I think only one of these movies was actually made by Universal. But like we had Jack Nicholson's Wolf, which could have been a great stand-in for the Wolfman. Yeah, we had the Brendan Fraser, the Mummy in '99, right? Universal, perfect Mummy movie. Mm-hmm. We had there was House on Haunted Hill, which isn't a Universal right. Watch movie, but that was a great remake. Exactly. We had the Dracula movie with Gary Oldman, fucking perfect. And we yeah, also Bram Stoker's had, Dracula. Uh, there had, was also De Niro. De Niro yeah, De Niro's Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Like, if those were made by the same production houses, which they weren't, unfortunately, that would have been a fantastic chapter in the Monsters saga. That would have been the best we got. Because like all those movies feel like they could have existed in the same world, especially the De Niro, the, the, the I can't speak, the De Niro and Gary Oldman movies. And you know what? If history repeats itself, Brandon, right now is actually the perfect time for the mo- the the original monsters, the original classic monsters to make their comeback because this is exactly what happened in the 90s when the slashers kind of had their say mm-hmm. what happened. You know, Dracula came back in an insanely huge way with Francis Ford Coppola's movie and then Frankenstein and then it kind of tapered off and it didn't really happen in a big way. There was a TV v- movie with Frankenstein that Randy Quaid was in. I think Randy played the monster. It's actually pretty good. It's actually pretty damn good. Yeah. Um, but right now is the perfect time if history were to repeat itself. And I think we're kind of getting Dracula. We're getting Robert, Roger Edgar, Roger Edgar's doing an Osferatu, which is my most anticipated film of the year still. Um, I hope it's good. I do too. Um, I have, I, I have hope a lot they make him fit. look. I hope they make him. They give him that classic makeup. Yeah, and I want those. I want those hands with the long, you know. Um, I want Justin said, "Fucking eyebrows too." That's yeah. what I want. Justin said, "Universal opened a Universal Monster store at their park, so I think they're trying to push him." Mm-hmm. I, yeah, dude. To me, like, if you like, when people ask me, and the last show I did, the last solo show I did, Brandon, somebody asked me, "Who's on your Mount Rushmore of horror?" I don't know how you feel about this. But I said, you know, I could go back and forth because I think there's four. But the number one, like the biggest head out of all four to me is Dracula. It's not Michael. It's not Freddy. It's it's, it's Dracula. To me, that's the most endearing and probably greatest horror character of all time. And I don't know if you go old school as well or if you actually do think maybe Jason or Michael or Leatherface is the biggest. But to me, it's no doubt. Klaus Kinsey is a fucking madman in 79, Sidney McGrail. I agree. Uh, but I don't know how you feel about that. Do you think that the classic monsters still supersede the slasher icons? Because I, I do. Know, I don't know if they supersede or if it's just a different era. Uh, you definitely can't have one without the other, right? So I guess the Mount Rushmore will probably still be classic monsters. I feel like it makes us pretentious for saying that, but I feel like it's probably true. Yes and no. I mean, the thing is, when you look at Dracula, everybody can say, oh, Bela Lugosi, because that's the first Dracula. But, dude, you could argue that Christopher Lee is the, oh, yeah. the Dracula or just – I love the Hammer Dracula films. Now, Brennan, it t- I, t- I tell some people, like, where should I start? I said, wait five years. And what I mean by that is he's usually younger people. And this isn't always the case. And I really don't like being like that. But I also don't want people to see these movies too early. It's weird, right? Because I feel like I feel like once I started watching more movies and eased my way into Italian films and started to ease my way into different stuff, watching the – because I just got a Blue Underground 4K of uh, a Hammer type. I believe it was Hammer. It was uh, – uh, I forgot what the name of the movie was. Blue around. It's a 1970s Hammer film uh, with uh, Christopher Lee, where he plays a judge in England, and it's kind of like a Salem witch trials movie. And they, it's a rough movie, Brandon. The subject. I think people also don't remember how sleazy those Hammer films were too. Mm-hmm. And this film was all about you know these women being tried for. Uh, somebody knows what that blew in around 4K. I just watched it, but Christopher Lee plays this sadistic judge who just takes advantage of the women kills them all for going against the, the the you know the court and calls them all witches and they have to fight back it's a great movie but it's sleazy as fuck like it's sleazy mm. um 
but I, yeah, it took me a while to, it took me a while to get into hammer. Like I really had to wait till I was about 30 <laughs> to really start. Like, I, I don't know because I don't know if you watched those movies when you were really little. Uh, only a few of them. I don't remember them that well. Like I think Dracula AD 72 was one that my uncle watched a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I, as a kid, I got all the Christopher Lee hammer films mixed up because there were so many of them and I never really saw the whole thing at any given time unlike other horror movies so i sort of all got them mixed up yeah. i would love to go, i need to go back and watch the hammer dracula's now dude prince of darkness yeah. i think is about as good as it gets but also there's some really schlocky ones too like dracula ad 79 mm -hmm. ad 72 excuse yep. me 72 he climbs up a wall like spider-man mm -hmm. Uh, there's some great shit. Uh, somebody says humanoids from the deep. That's a great Roger Corman. Mm. <laughs> you know, uh, but listen, Brandon, we're at two hours. I had a great time tonight. It was good stuff. Uh, we're going to take one more question real quick, Brandon. Hey, Planet CHH. What do you think of the movie interview with a vampire? I have one complaint. Don't you dare. My complaint is I wish they would have used the sympathy for the devil motorhead version at the end instead of the guns and roses version but it was so perfect yeah but the gun the motorhead version is great i mean it really is great that um, movie is the best vampire movie of all time next to lost boys they both live in the same world for me most of the time interview the vampire wins though as sacrilegious as that is well my favorite scene of interview of the vampire or one of my favorite scenes is really like the opening where you see when you see uh Slater and uh um Pitt in the apartment just talking, it's like surreal. Mm. I don't know. It, it's a great it really is a great movie. It came in at, at the perfect time because it wasn't the perfect time for that movie. Mm. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. So it's such a standout in ninety four. Four. Yep. You Thirty know? years, man. Um, but when 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 I say that uh Cruz won me over. I, I avoided that movie, Brandon, because of Cruz. So I actually felt the same way Anne Rice did. Mm. Same way. You know, and he won me over within 20 seconds. Yeah, he was fucking killer. Um, and he was, yeah, he was so good. He he was sinister and he had a humor to him that mm. I didn't think I was gonna see. Um that's a great film, probably top 10 horror films of the 90s i'd say mm -hmm. you know it's an epic i mean do you put that up above like candy man or uh, i think you probably would oh yeah interview with the vampire is definitely up there way the fuck up there it's such a well that movie like makes you feel like you're in the atmosphere and, it. It, and it's a timepiece too which a lot of people they don't like when they hear timepiece they go oh you know, where's my 4K of that movie, dude? Like, I want a huge big box vinegar syndrome 4K of Interview of the Vampire. Um, I tell you who would be great to put that out would probably be Arrow Video. Um, but I don't know what's going on with that. If uh, because Anne Rice passed away, right? She passed away, yeah. so I don't know what the deal is with that. If there's hands in the pie of people that have to sign off to uh make that release happen, it will. I'm sure it will. Um, I'd I'd put that in the top ten of the '90s. I really I really would. I have a snapper case DVD of Interview with the Vampire. I did, but I got rid of it like a fucking idiot. Not anymore. I just got Brandon. Um, I ought to show it to you. I just got Wolf sealed on Laserdisc. Three bucks. Oh, nice. Sealed. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I did. A, if people want to see it, go to my video I just did the other day called I Bought Laser Discs in Store in 2024. And I think it's even in the thumbnail, my Wolf Laser Disc. But um, yeah, this was this was great, man. Um, it was a good time. I want to thank everybody for being here tonight and thank everybody uh, that for the kind words on the 22K. And thanks, everybody, for uh, telling Brandon congrats and good luck with uh, mystery name baby number two. That's right. Um, yeah, I just, I just, uh, I'm, I'm sorry about the short notice tonight, guys, but 
you know, it, we, we had, a, we, this was just the perfect night to do it. So I've actually got to go running five miles cause I'm starting <laughs> graveyards next week. I just got off of work my, my day shift today. So I start graveyards next Tuesday, but I try to get a head start. So I'm going to go running and, uh, listen to some, uh, some podcast. I'll figure it out. Just listen to some music, but, um, good chill show. You know, we've been doing some crazy shows, Brandon. Sometimes it's good to just kick back. It is just old talk. school, old school Planet Dirty, old school PD. That's right. This was the Super Butterobe. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't talk about video games once. <laughs> top. All right, really quick, Brandon. Really quick, we got 101 people here still, Brandon. Top five NES games. Go. NES games. Holy shit. Okay. Um, Super Mario Brothers three. Do you, see, uh, do you see that? I do, yeah. We're talking NES only, right? Okay. Super Mario Brothers 3, Castlevania 3. Uh, stop. Stop. Over one? Yes. Castlevania 1. Uh, Super Mario Brothers 2. Or Doki Doki Panic. Interchangeable on the NES, right? And then followed by, I guess, uh, Ninja Gaiden. The first one. The original. You mean... This Ninja Gaiden? Yes, that's it. Um, I'm gonna go number five, Top Gun Second Mission. Wow, I've never played that. It's good. Um, then I'm gonna go. Then I'm gonna go Ninja Turtles one, because this game's actually really fun. And despite really how hard it is <laughs> so yeah, that movie. i've never beaten that game but brandon i didn't realize this till a couple years ago you have to swap characters for different opponents mm -hmm. like the little remember the there's a level where you have to jump on these platforms and there's like six or seven flies above you that keep going left and right if you swap from donatello to Raphael. Donatello takes him a couple of hits to kill those little flies. Raphael, with the, with his size, you go up and jump and hit him. They they die in one hit. You have to learn to be strategic, and once you learn the strategies, you can actually progress very far in the game. Um. Next up, Brandon, I'm gonna go. Uh, Mega Man Three. Wow! Look at that. Holy shit. Then I'm going to go uh, Castlevania. Nice. And then my favorite game of all time, Brandon. Was that four or five? I think that was four. Let's just say it was four. The best game of all time for me on Nintendo, Mike Tyson's Punch Out. <laughs> Holy crap! Look at that, the real one. I have the other Punch Out too with Mr. Dream. Yeah, we're gonna have to do an SNES uh, stream at some point. SNES. Oh, absolutely. the greatest console, the greatest video game era of all time. I agree. Uh, one of the best ports of this game. One of them. Oh yeah, Mortal Kombat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got all my games set up, Brandon. I'm excited. All right. Here we go. Battletoads and Double Dragons. Wow, look at that shit. All right. Guys, I really appreciate y'all hanging out tonight. This was awesome. Yeah, Summertime Blues. You know I love Punch Out. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out. God bless you. Um, the next time we do Planet Dirty, Brandon will have another biscuit. And um, I'm going to hold her up like the Lion King right here. Like, hey, I look. Will, yeah, I will simply just be older and fatter. So, <laughs> Christian, ha Christian Happy 22K. That's crazy. Congratulations. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, the chat, God bless you guys. If you don't mind, before you leave, drop a like tonight. Everybody have a great, safe weekend. Um, eat some good foods. Uh, spend some time with your families and be safe. Don't do anything stupid. Drink responsibly um, and just relax and take it easy.
stay safe. God bless you guys, and we'll see y'all next time. Take care. Mongolia beef. It is off the chain. Oh, I don't it's crispy. That. Dude, it's fantastic. That shit is fantastic.